Knocked out. The, wi the rain was whipping down. The wind was whipping the entire time. And we saw Hofstra at times struggle to get their passing and offensive attack going when they were fighting against the wind, especially going up against a tough team in Syracuse, a team that brought a lot of baggage in terms of fan support, in terms of overall energy in Sheward Stadium. Yeah. You expect the same thing Stony Brook. This is a team that travels well. They get fan support, and they're not making a five-hour trip down from Syracuse, New York. They're making a 50-trip from, from Stony Brook, Long Island. They're going to be here in droves. They're going to be loud. They're going to make sure that they can make Stewart Stadium into a Western version of Laval Stadium that they have on their campus. Well, and you mentioned it yesterday. You were there you know, for the women's game, and it had a great energy to it because it was Hofstra versus Stony Brook. That game didn't really mean as much to the standings compared to this one. This game means everything for both of these two teams. And, there, you know, if the weather was a little better, I think we'd have more people here and have a bigger energy. But you know, looking down the crowd, there's still a, a nice crowd crowd filing in. There's still youth class players also coming in as well, Jack. So I think this is one of the biggest games for this Hofstra program in a long time, maybe since the 2021 season. So this is a huge game because this can really elevate a program that has been obviously a very good team in its history, but can elevate it to the next level where they're at right now. This is a team, again, in Hofstra that is looking to make it to the CAA tournament for the first time since, as you mentioned, that 2021 season, a season that they made it all the way to the CAA championship yep. game. They beat the team that they will look to play this year in Delaware in that first round. And obviously that was a tournament that was held here at Hofstra, had a lot of fan support going into it. And as we say, right now it's a little bit sparse in terms of fans in the stands and people really getting in, making sure they're, they're known. But we got here about two hours ago to set ourselves up. Stony Brook was already here. Hofstra fans were already here. They are in the parking lot tailgating. Got to expect they're going to start to file their way in. It was a big weekend here, or a big day for Hofstra as they were getting ready for Music Fest that they're going to have. So they're going to have a lot of fan support that were going to make their way from our intramural fields over to James M. Stewart Stadium. They have promotions going on to get as many people in the stands as possible. And obviously, that's a hope to counteract what we see Stony Brook do on a week by week basis in getting their fan support. And if you're Hofstra, you know that you're gonna you have a tall task ahead of you. You're right now you sit at that fifth spot. So you're on the outside looking in in terms of CAA play. You sit at a record in your conference at three and three, overall record of five and eight. You know what you have to do. Obviously, if you don't win this game, it's done. You have to win and when you make the schedule, when Coach Seth Tierney makes the schedule at the beginning of the season, we looked at it. We said that's a game that you're going to circle on. It's Stony Brook, first yep. time in the CAA, last game of the year. Last game of the year, 7 p.m. under the lights. It has everything. Everything is working in its favor to make this the best story possible for a Hofstra Pride team that has battled all season. If we talk about this this Pride team. They've had injuries. They've had missteps. They've had slips. They've had falls. They've had everything work against them and yet they still find themselves the last game of the regular season against their hated rival making their first trip to the CAA and looking to make their first trip to the CAA yeah. tournament. They have everything. The, the pot has been made. The ingredients have been added. All Hofstra needs to do is turn on the fire and make sure that it gets cooked in the right way. Yeah, and you know, you're watching on Flow. You'll be listening now on 88.7 FM. We welcome you there as we just got on there as well. And, and Jack, this is going to be an incredible game. I mean, you mentioned it. You know, there's a rivalry to this, a rivalry factor. Um, there's a lot of players from Long Island who have played at both of the stadiums many times. You know, for high school, and this is really. I mean, you think about it. This is this stadium has been one, the probably the biggest lacrosse capital of the state of. Long Island, um, but it's not far behind with Stony Brook, and that's going to make it. That, that always makes this, 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 this rivalry so important and so unique. Is where it's two two schools on Long Island, the only two schools basically, other uh, other than LIU, of course, and, and St. John's. John's. Um, but the two schools on Long Island that are really. You know, forefronting lacrosse, and they're the two biggest schools, to say the least, uh, for lacrosse on Long Island, and it's what a lot of money goes into both these schools as well is lacrosse, and that's going to make today's game, you know, more important not just for the players, but for alumni and for fans and for students, for those who care. So it's going to be really interesting, and you know, we're we're in for a good one, Jack. It's yeah, it, 
I'm trying to find the right words because this is a game that we've been talking about together all week, Jack, about how what's going to happen. And it, we really don't know because these are two teams that are so uniquely matched as well when you look at the matchups between these two teams. And in terms of series history, Stony Brook and Hofstra. Right now, Hofstra has the advantage at 7-5 against the Seawolves. This is going to be the first time that these two teams will play since February 27, 2021, where in which the Pride at home at Stewart Stadium earned a 20-17 victory. Last time the Seawolves were able to defeat Hofstra, that was February 25th, 2020. They picked up a 14-11 win over at Laval Stadium. So we look at these last two games that we mentioned there, a win for Hofstra at home yeah. and a win for Stony Brook at home. So if we're going on recent trends, that bodes well for the Hofstra Pride. Obviously, they're going against a team in Stony Brook that is extremely difficult. As we said, it is a win or go home for both teams, even though the Seawolves have the better CAA record at 4-2 and two as opposed to the 3-3 three and three Pride's record. But it goes down to that tiebreaker. It's and if, the tiebreaker. If, if Hofstra thing. wins, they have that tiebreaker, and they are able to go ahead. And a lot of it helps from Towson today. Uh, going Looking out of the conference, Towson with a huge win, 15-10 over Delaware. Delaware's first loss in conference this year. So Towson currently at a three spot. However, if Stony Brook is able to leapfrog, they could get as high as the two. Yeah, that's the big thing is that win can get them as high as the two. So they obviously know that a win here can help them jump higher in the standings. But they also know it's it's not a secret. Both teams are well aware of what is at stake. A loss loses you a spot in the conference tournament. It was plastered all over both teams' game notes and all their media outlets and everything that they were sending out to their fans, to their team. You know that if you're Coach Seth Tierney, you have that circled up on your big whiteboard. Yeah. You know what's at stake. And obviously, Coach Tierney has not been shy talking about this season. No. They have not had anything really go their way for long stretches of a, a very tough year. Again, they played a lot of close games to start out the season. They're five and eight, but they're a good five and eight team, believe it or not. Yeah, and then that's the big thing. We talk about it. Navy, a one goal loss. Merrimack, they lost that one 7-10, to but that was a close game up until the final minutes. Michigan, that was a close loss over in Michigan. They beat LIU. They beat St. John's. They had a game in Villanova where it was close through one half of play, and yeah. then the third quarter they really had the wheels fall off. Syracuse was close through a quarter. Hofstra had the first three goals of that game, and then we saw a timeout called by head coach Gary Gate, and that really turned the the favor of the the, the Towson game too. I mean, Hofstra had four quick goals, and Towson did the same exact thing, and we're able to win that game here. So, really, Hofstra is going to have to have a good start and continue to have. I mean, they have good starts a lot later this season, but they'll have to continue that momentum from that start and push it full 60 minutes. And we look on the other side in terms of Rutgers, it's, they've had, or not Rutgers, in terms of Stony Brook, they opened up their season with a close loss to Rutgers. They lost to Penn State. They have overtime losses to Providence. They've had close games. Yeah. Another overtime loss to Drexel at 14-15. They are in the same boat as Osh Pride. If you look at these two teams, very evenly matched so far through this point in the season. Obviously, this is the last game for both teams. Yeah, definitely so. So, it's just going to be and Hofstra coming out in the gold uniforms too, which might give him some extra oomph as well today. Well, that is a special occasion for the Hofstra Pride. Obviously, it is reserved that gold alternate uniform as Stony Brook is going to be in their home blue uniforms. We're going to take one break. When we come back, we will have starting lineups, key players, key to the games, and opening draw control or opening face off an opening draw for this win or go home game for Hofstra and Stony Brook. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Men's Lacrosse presented by Flow Sports and 88.7 FM WRHU. Stadium here as we are just about five minutes away from opening face-off between the Hofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves. Once again, my name is Jeff Carthy. I'm joined inside Christian Gardecki. And Christian, we will go through the starting lineups for both teams first for the visiting Stony Brook Seawolves. Their attack unit will start with number 11, Blake Bellin. Number 34, Dylan Palinetti, a great player for the Stony Brook yeah. team who leads them in points, goals, and assists. And rounding out that attacking unit will be number 44, Jonathan Huber. Going to the midfield, they'll have Will Button, Noah Armitage, 
and Matt Anderson. Their numbers are 9, 16, and 51, respectively. Finally, to their defensive unit will be number 42, Michael Sabella, number 47, Riley Hegarty, and number 55, Sean Conk, with their goal, their starting goalie, Jamo McLaughlin. Jamison McLaughlin is his name, but he will be referred to as Jamo per his request. Then we'll go over to the Hofstra starters as their attacking unit will be number 7, Colton Rudd, number 11, Gerard Kane, and number 66, John Batson. Their midfielder unit is Rory Jones, Matt Elder, and Justin Sykes. Their numbers are 2, 12, and 14, respectively. And their, finally, their defensive unit will have number 19, Tom Ford, number 43, Tim Hegarty, and number 50, Daniel Oaks. And starting in goal for the Pride, as he has all season, number 33, Matt Gates. As both teams will line up for the playing of the National Anthem, we will turn it over for the National Anthem and the PA announcer right now. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to rise and remove your caps as we honor America and those who protect it with the playing of our National Anthem. into our press box here at James M. Schuert Stadium. Once again, my name is Jack Carthy, joined alongside by Christian Gardecki. And Christian, we just read out the starting lineup for both teams. We will go with keys to the game and key players, starting with Anthony Gallardi's team in Stony Brook. Yeah, for Stony Brook, I think they have a lot of very talented players. I think I'm going to look at Noah Armitage. Uh, he has just been un unbelievable this year, the midfield position. Him and, and Dylan Palanetti, those are players I think Stony Brook will be keying on and Hoff should be keying on defensively on those guys. As for the pride, John Madsen. I mean, he has been unbelievable this year and I think he's really the guy that Tierney will be leaning on offensively and also Gerard Kane. Gerard Kane and Madsen are huge factors in this Hofstra Pride offense. Obviously, the other player we can look at is Colton Rudd, who has been a yep. bit of a shifty player. Normally, he Rory likes coming in that X. Roy Jones, it's the, a very stout, very tough Hofstra Pride attacking unit as well as that midfield attacking unit as both teams will break their huddles. The referees for tonight's game are going to be Thomas Holen, Mike McCloskey, and Tim Lussinger as they will attempt to keep the peace. I don't know if that's a battle I would yeah. like to take in a game that is sure to be a physical one and emotional one with a lot of emotion and a lot of energy as the Hofstra Pride will make their way onto the field as we will have the lineups for both teams and handshakes. Once again, we'll go with the starters for each team. It's Blake Bellin, Dylan Palinetti, Jonathan Huber, Will Button, Noah Armitage, Matt Anderson, Michael Savella, Riley Hegarty, Sean Conk, and Jamo McLaughlin. That is Stony Brook for Hofstra. It's Colton Rudd, Gerard Kane, John Madsen, Rory Jones, Matt Elder, Justin Sykes, Tom Ford, Tim Hegarty, Daniel Oaks, and Matt Gates is both goalies. Shake hands, make their way into their respective cages, and the rest of the team will get their handshakes as we go to that face-off X. The wind is picking up, the rain is picking up, 
and we are just about ready for the season closer, a win or go home Long Island rivalry game between the Hofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves who are looking for their first trip to the CAA tournament as we have a fight for the ball on that faceoff. It was Declan Mitchell taking it up against Chase Patterson for the Hofstra Pride. Both teams fighting for it, and it's going to be in favor of the Pride. They yeah. get their first face-off win. They will be traveling from left to right across your TV screen, computer, radio dial. They are in their gold alternate jerseys with blue lettering and numbering, white trim around those letters and numbers, white pants, and a white helmet with a blue and yellow trim around the shoulders and on the top of that helmet. For Stony Brook, they are in their blue away jerseys with white lettering and numbering, a red trim around those letters and numbers, and they are wearing some beautiful chrome helmets Love it. in this one as Hofstra starts it up on offense early. It's with John Madison, 45 seconds left on the shot clock as they are still getting the right personnel on, but starting very slow for Coach Tierney's team. Yeah, they were trying to get Rory Jones on. Now they got an opportunity here. Matt Elder has it for the pride. Cuts down low as he passes to Rudd. Rudd up top to Kane on this side alley. And as Hofstra still playing slow, it makes its way back to Elder, who is on the near side alley. He gets hit a little bit there as he has Dan Newton on him. Elder cuts back to X. He's on the side of the net there, spins off, looks to a pass, takes a shot. It goes wide, but playing back up there is Colton Rudd, but good to get the first shot of the game if you're the Hofstra pride in that Elder. Having this first possession is huge as well for Hofstra. So Rudd picks it up, he races out to that far side of the net, but he has nothing, he's gonna have to send a pass. It causes Matt Elder to jump to catch it as he fights one-on-one -on -one with Newton there, spins around, shot off the side, but playing back up yet again is Colton Rudd. That is one thing that he is known for with this Hofstra Pride team, but with four seconds left on the shot clock, he's not gonna do much. He sends it to that far side corner, and you can tell already Hofstra getting their defensive unit on as the Santi, Kale, and C's go on for the Pride. Those are the big three they've had in the midfield defensively all year for this team. You can hear the intensity from both sidelines on the crowd mic, Jack. It's going to be really intense for the whole 60 minutes here. It's going to be loud all game as Bailing gets it over that midfield line. He sends a pass back to number 51, Matt Anderson. As here we go for Stony Brook, their first offense possession as Anderson gets it back to Balin. Balin looks over his passes as he's on the near side here. He's being marked by Tom Ford, but not much space between them as he's going to send it back by the net to Will Button. Button looking over his options, sends one up top, shot. And it's a goal. First goal of the game is for the Seawolves. That's number 51, Matt Anderson, as he beats Matt Gates to the lower right-hand side. Stony Brook races out to a 1-0 lead, 12.51 left to play in the first quarter. Matt Anderson, that is goal number 25 in the year, puts him third on the team behind Huber and Palinetti. The Burlington, Ontario native just has a deadly shot from outside, and he shows it there, beating on the bounce by Matt Gates and the Seawolves strike first. We go back to face off X. It's still going to be Patterson going up against Mitchell as Hofstra won the last one, but Mitchell able to get it as he races in. He has a lane towards the net. He gets hit as he shoots and it goes wide. Stony Brook still has it as picking that up behind the net was Jonathan Huber. So Stony Brook will slow it down on the far side as it sits on the stick of Dylan Palinetti. So Palinetti makes a quick pass out there to Caleb Pearson. And Stony Brook gets a goal early, and they get the ball right back as it's back in the stick of Caleb Pearson. Pearson, looking over his options on the near side, he's going to send one back behind the net where it goes on the stick of Will Button. Button sends one out wide where it goes to Palinetti. Palinetti spins off as a pass goes up top to Carlo. Carlo looking over options, he spins off, gets a defender to fall, but he has to send a pass to number 53, Pearson. And Pearson gets hit there by Daniel Oaks. That forces a great turnover too. And Daniel Oaks, that's something he's been doing all season. Yeah. He loves to play the body. We saw it a lot last year. He had a game-saving play as he sent a huge hit against Merrimack, and that sealed the game for the Pride. But Oaks has just been a force when it comes on a defensive end for this Hofstra team. And he's got the ball here across midfield. 
Trevor Natalie now has it for the Hofstra Pride. He gets his first action. He's running this second midfield unit. He has Sterling Audrey and number 55, Ryan Sheridan, or Sheary, as Coach Tierney likes to call him. So Audrey now has it for the Pride, looks over his options. He's going to find it to Natalie. Natalie on the near side. He's got Rudd, and he will take that pass as Rudd stands at that CAA logo. Very fitting for today's game. Obviously, a winner go home for both teams as goes back by the net to Audrey. Audrey shimmies around, cuts towards the middle. He's going to send one up to Sheridan. Sheridan's going to lose it, but he picks it up. No, he doesn't get it there. And a heads-up play by Kristen Loud as Loud will run in. He's a long stick. He gets hit by Sheridan. Great backup by Sheridan to go back. Natalie now has it for the Hofstra Pride, and they get it into the offensive zone yet again. But Ryan Sheridan, that's a great decision. He loses the ball, and then he gets back, and as Loud's about to take the shot, he just slashes it out of his hands, picks up the ground ball, and then sends it over to Natalie. I don't think I've heard the stadium be louder for a play like that as the huge Hofstra section, which is right behind their bench, just went absolutely electric. As again, Coach Tierney keeping this second unit out. I have really liked this second unit all year. You have the youth of Trevor and Natalie, you have the older players, Audrey and Sheridan. It's a really good fit, as well as the size of Sheridan. It's a good, good fit all around. Natalie races out to the front of the net, looked for a shot, but he didn't have anything. He attempts to pass to Eldridge, falls to his knees, gets back up, and he sends it over to Audrey. And as you were saying, it's, it's a second unit that has really evolved as the season has gone on, Christian. Yeah, absolutely. And then you add it with this attack unit as well. Elder with it for the pride on the near side. Looks over his options. He's going to send one back to Natalie. Natalie's going to use his legs. He cuts across the middle. Looks for a shot. He's loaded up, and he gets the shoulder dropped in, but that's going to be a hit to a head. I mean, there's two flags. Two flags are going to fly as sending that hit for Stony Brook. It looked like it was number 55, Sean Conk. His Conk really lowered the shoulder, but as Natalie falls, it's a hit to the head, and that's an easy call for both refs. Yeah, this year Hofstra, 14 for 52 on the man advantage. That's a 26.9%, so 27% uh, rate this year for the Pride. See what they can do here. 14 goals on that this year, where they've allowed 15. It's actually going to be a holding penalty, and it's going to go against Mile Estrella. I, actually, there's two penalties here, I believe. No, there's one. Still, you're asking for another player in the field. They get one. But, uh... It's going to be a 30-second penalty here. Conk's still in the box, too, which makes no sense. So now, is there two holding, penalties here? They called a holding against David Mile Estrella, and Conk now goes back onto the field, and now yeah. Coach Gilardi, he is arguing with the ref unit. And yeah, that's just... I don't understand that call there. I thought that that should have been an easy call against Conk as he lowered the shoulder in an alley, but it's going to be a running clock as Hofstra starts it up here, and immediately Stony Brook makes their bench known as they start to chant. Got to go quick here for Hofstra. Kane with it now. He passes back and forth with Justin Sykes as we have another player making his first presence is Ryan Woodland as he has always come in on this man-up unit. Shot scores! And Gerard King gives a little bit of a how do you do to that Stony Brook bench. Hey, come at me now. Eight seconds left on the man up. It's 1 1, 9 32 left in the first quarter. But what a shot there from Gerard King. He posts up in that spot, Jack, on the near side, about 15 yards out. That's his sweet spot. And he was able to get a little bit of room and just put it on. And now the pride. I have tied it back up. You have to take advantage of this. That's a big man advantage goal as well. I don't understand how you let Gerard Kane that wide open for his 18th of the season. As you go back to that face-off X, it's still going to be Declan Mitchell going against Patterson. And a false start called against Declan Mitchell. So Hofstra's going to start it up. It'll be with Corey Kale, but he's not going to stay on for too long as he waits for the right players to come on. Rory Jones is going to make himself available for the pass as John Madsen also comes in off. Tony Brook will set up here is they have 30 seconds same that the Hofstra Pride had pass up top loading up for a shot there was Palinetti who just hit the post he does a no look pass but it's going to get knocked down and it gets picked off there by the Hofstra Pride and Tim Hegarty who sends one back to oh. but he's going to lose it as they're both fighting for it hit there 
as Gates, Johnny on the spot, comes out of his cage and out of the crease. They'll go pick that one up and send it over to Corey Gale, who races it over for the Hofstra Pride. And that'll do it for the man up for Stony Brook. So a missed pass, then a turnover for the Pride, and then immediately Matt Gates able to get that back for Hofstra, and they go back with a 1-1 tie, but a chance to take the lead here for the first time. And this will be huge for Hofstra to get that lead early, Jack. Sheridan now has it for the Pride. He's waiting for a teammate there, and he'll get it in trade Parks as Parks will shift with Sheridan. So we got Parks on this second unit now with Sheridan and Natalie. Something to keep an eye on. I think he's going to be switching with Audrey all night. So Sheridan with it, cutting his way to the front. He's going to lose it, and he gets leveled there. Huge hit by Michael Savella. And taking it back the other way quickly on transition here is Sternerbrook. It's with Hegarty. Hegarty racing in. He takes a shot and a kick save there by Matt Gates. What a save to get his first one as that is going to keep it a 1-1 game here. 6-11 left to play in the first quarter, but what a save there for Gates. You think this game is going to come down defense or what? And especially the goalkeeping. You have two very solid goalkeepers in the cages today. So Stony Brook now with their own chance to take the lead again as they were able to play the back up there. It's now on the stick of... They're going back and forth with Button and Behelen. So now it's up in the middle there with Anderson. As Anderson cuts to the far side, he sends a pass to number 44, Huber, as he goes back to Behelen. Behelen over to Anderson. Alan Eddy now has it. He takes a shot, scores! Kept it low to low. Low to low there is Dylan Palanetti. He's able to find the back of the net. It's now a 2-1 game. Another one goal lead for the Seawolves. 5.33 left to play in the first quarter. It's a nice shot. I mean, you, you, have, you have that space again. If you're going to be left open with space, these shooters will take those shots nine times out of ten, Jack. And Palanetti does it right there. And, you know, there's a reason why he is going to be one of the better players here in the CAA. That is his 46th goal of the season. And he's, this is a guy who's taken, that was his 144th shot on, on this year. He's taken so many shots. It's just incredible to see how good he is. I think teams should be looking at him professionally in a couple years. I mean, you can't let Palinetti that wide open. We saw it there. He's the top player for this Stony Brook team in terms of scoring. As Patterson's going to win it. He's racing towards the net. He takes a shot and scores! What a goal there for the faceoff. No get off guy. And Chase Patterson, it's 2 2, and the Hofstra Pride have responded again. Unbelievable. As soon as he picked up the ball, you knew Chase Patterson was going to go for the shot. He thought about a pass, though, to that far side for Colton Rudd. He gets his defender on him. He shrugs off the check and just throws it on, and this game is tied. I mean, Chase Patterson able to win that cleanly to himself, scoops up the ground ball, and normally when you see these face-off guys get hit, that's his first goal of the season, we see him get hit, and they really are able to shade off and send yep. the pass out to the wide, and that's where you thought he's going to Colton Rudd. He does it again, and he races in, sends a pass to Rudd, shot over the net. And it's going to remain with the Hofstra Pride, but that right yeah. there is what you expect Patterson to do. That was his first career goal for Chase Patterson, by the way, and almost had a second one potentially. So congratulations to Chase Patterson for his first career goal. And no better time than what could potentially be your final game as he is in his senior year here. But he will not make sure that the this bench is excited time. for him right now, by the way, Jack. Hey, he gets in and it's just the man of the hour. As he didn't even have a chance to go back and celebrate with his teammates. He had to go and win another yeah. faceoff, and he and does. He almost had it, too. I think that time, Stony Brook's defense knew that he was thinking about a shot. So they put a man on him first, which, which had him slide over, which had him get the pass over to Rudd. Elder with it, passes back behind the net to Rudd. Rudd to the far side where it goes to Rory Jones. Jones to threat there on that. He goes for a low high shot. He's going to go for his own rebound, but a save there for McLaughlin. He's down on all fours, though. Yeah, that's, that's not what you like to see, and the whistle is blown here for J-Mo McLaughlin as Stony Brook was going on to the clear here. It was a hard shot. Yeah, it looked like it might have caught him in the shin there, so he's favoring one of his legs. It looks like it's his left leg. as He's able to get up before the trainers even get to him. Obviously, that's a shot that just stings, and 
we see a guy like Roy Jones who loves that low to high bull shot and that caught him hard. He's gonna walk it off here and I think Jack, we might have a change potentially here. Yep, we got a change yeah. coming in. Suturini's gonna come in for Stony Brook. Yeah, this season he's only appeared in four games, has played 20 minutes and allowed four goals on seven shots on goal. A goals against average of 11.69 in that limited time. So we'll see him come in for Stony Brook. Immediately gets in on the action. He sends a pass that forces his teammate there and Sabella to jump up to it, then gets it right back. And we're starting to see some of these passes not the the most crisp there as you expected with him getting in as the action for the first time. Yeah. But Stony Brook's able to get it and But as a goal, you have to be ready at all times. However, I think we're gonna have a gonna switch gonna right back. back. So he only was in for maybe 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and McLaughlin comes back in, but a great job by Squad Jarini to get that clear away from a very tough officer ride. Yeah, that's the most important thing is, it was really more of a, let's make sure that McLaughlin can get himself back to a spot where he can play again. So he just filled a spot and he does it well. As you said, he just fights off that officer ride. So still with it are the Seawolves, the miss pass intended there for Will Button. It's gonna get to the midfield line, both teams fighting for it, and it's sent back where it is picked up on the ground by Sean Carlo. So Carlo has it. He sends it over to a teammate in Pearson. They're saying to reset the shot clock here? And a whistle will blow. They want a reset of the shot clock. I don't know. Yep, they, yeah, they, so they reset the reset shot it. clock here. There wasn't a shot on goal, right? No, it was a missed pass, but I wonder if they're it, because of the Because it went to the line? Because maybe? it went to the line. And had to I'm not 100% sure. In. I'll be honest. That would be what the call generally is for. So I gotta imagine that that's what the art. I think it was. was, yeah. Good key power by the Stony Brook defense. That was uh, by Sabella who kept it over the line. So Char with it for Stony Brook. He gets hit off as he is being marked there by a Hofstra defender and Richie Hickis. It's that two-headed monster there of Hickis and Kale for short stick defensive mid midfielders. As so Charo has it again. He's still looking for something. He gets nothing. He's just getting worked over by Hickis. So he's going to have to restart, send it to Carlo. Carlo goes to the far side where it finds its way onto the stick of Palanetti. Palanetti cutting from far side in here. Takes a shot. Saved there by Matt Gates. He gets out on one knee and uses that big bread basket of a yep. stick to save it. That's exactly what they want him to do. And does a nice job there to make that save. Now Hofstra slowing up the clear here, trying to push Stony Brook's defense out. So 2.30 left to play in the quarter. It's still tied at two. Stony Brook has scored first, then they scored third, Hofstra, and then have gone back and forth in terms of goals. And it's still loud again. Both teams know what's at stake. If you win, you will make it to the CAA tournament. Again, Hofstra looking to make it back there for the first time since 2021. And Stony Brook looking to make it to the first CAA tournament for the first time in program history, this being their first year in the in the conference. This is big no matter what. Stony Brook will, if they win, they get the three seed. Hofstra will get the four seed if Hofstra wins, just to keep in mind for those watching or listening at home or wherever you are. So Sheridan getting worked over there. He's going to have to send it back out to Rudd. Rudd to Audrey. Audrey attempted pass to Natalie, but Natalie making his way back towards that yeah. defensive line for the Hofstra Pride. And it was sent where he was, but not where he was going. As you can see, a little bit of miscommunication there between the two midfielders. And a little bit of anger as Gerard Kane almost gets back to pick that one up as it was a pass intended for Matt Anderson who takes it in. He sends a pass down low where it goes to Will Button. Back behind the net now to number 44, Jonathan Huber. As now it'll be slowed down on the far side with Dylan Palinetti, who then sends a pass to a teammate Armitage. So Armitage now slows it down. He waits for the right players to come in. But Helen will come on as that pass will be sent immediately to him. So wind picking up, it's still, it's going from east to west, yep. which is across the field. 16 second difference between shot and game clock. Racing and shot, kick save there, as that shot was taken by number 51, Matt Anderson. Hofstra's gonna get it back to Gates, and Gates will send it to a teammate in Tom Ford on the far side. And oh, a wow. huge hit there, as attempting to get it over was Chris Berry. 
and it goes back for Sony Brook. Not a hit, but it was a use of your stick, and Barry's yeah, got to find a way to hold on back. Big stick check, and it was a legal procedure as the ball was still in the mesh. So Sony Brook has 30 seconds here with the shot clock turned off. With a chance now is Anderson. He had that most recent shot for the Seawolves. Now it's on the stick of Palinetti as Palinetti makes his way back to midfield, and he sends a pass to the Helen. Helen still with it, going against Barry. He races through the middle, takes a shot, and it just goes wide as he sent a pass to Will Button, and Button has one go off the side of the match. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Hofstra has it. They're going to have to move quickly. Long shot here. Watch. Got to imagine that that could be coming, and it's on the stick now. CC takes a shot, and it's saved there by McLaughlin, and that'll do it for the first quarter of play between these two Long Island rivals, and it solves nothing as we are still tied as it is 2-2. Two to two. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we will have second quarter action between the Ofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves. Just an Ofstra Pride men's across, presented by Flow Sports in 88.7 FM WRHU. Welcome back to James M. Short Stadium as we are just a few seconds away from the start of the second quarter between the Hofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves. Once again, my name is Jack McCarthy, joined alongside by Christian Gardecki. And Christian, a very fast, high energy, high pace to that first quarter that has solved nothing as we're still tied just as we were when we started. Yep. But quick goals from both teams, especially look for Chase Paris and his first career goal came immediately after Hofstra conceded and he wins another faceoff. And yeah, this is going to be coming down to defense. Matt Gates has been unbelievable believable in goal making uh, three very very good saves early yeah kick saves from him two of them at least yeah two of them two of them were kick saves and that third save was the one on a bounce shot that he was able to get down on one knee and just save easily as Hofstra will slow it down it's on the stick of Corey Kale he'll send a pass to number 14 Justin Sykes another elder statesman on this Hofstra pride team he's being shadowed by Dan Newton for the Seawolves and Hofstra is in their alternate yellow jerseys with blue lettering and numbering with white trim around those letters and numbers and then a blue and white trim on the sleeves. They have white shorts on and white helmets with a blue and yellow line across the middle as Parks gets shifted off. Shot and a goal there for the Hofstra Pride. Justin Sykes gets his first of the evening and the Hofstra Pride had their first lead of the evening as it is 3-2, 14.09 left in the second quarter. We didn't see a lot of Justin Sykes in that first quarter. Uh, this is really the first time we've seen him all game and he's filled in there uh, with Rory Jones and Trey Parks and was able to pick up. I mean, I've mentioned all year how much I love watching Justin Sykes play because he brings in that Canadian style to this Hofstra team and it really helps them to say the least and that's a big goal to give them their first lead. As another faceoff, nearly won there by Patterson, but it's going to get lost as picking up that ground ball was Christian Loud, and he gets run over by the Hofstra Pride and Colton Rudd, who puts his hand up to the sky as he runs past that Stony Brook bench. Do you think that they know this is a rivalry game? Because oh. they're not showing it so far. And especially the playoff atmosphere and the playoff meeting, basically, of this one. They, they they were hyping up the crowd after that last goal of the Hofstra student and fan section that's right below us. Yeah, that's, that fan student section has gotten very loud, and I don't know if you've seen three players have, or three fans have player helmets on, so you know yeah. that they have some sort of energy going into this one. As again, winner take all for this if you want to make it to the CAA tournament. Pride at the Delaware win. Stadium next week. With a Pride win, they will be the fourth seed, and with a Stony Brook win, they will be the third seed. As right now, it's with Trey Parks. Parks has it. There's a second offensive possession of the quarter. As he makes his way in, takes a shot, it just goes wide, but backing up there was Colton Rudd, as he always does, and will go for Stony Brook. They are in their blue away jerseys with white lettering and numbering, and a red trim around those letters and numbers as they are going in those chrome helmets, a beautiful chrome helmet for them, as they'll be moving from left to right across your TV screen radio dial in this one, as it's with the Hofstra Pride again, shot knocked down, it was Gerard Kane who took it, and he took a shot there that hit off the stick of a defender, I think it was. I think it was Conk. I think yeah. it was Conk, that was exactly what I was gonna say yeah. it was. Nice block, and you can see the Stony Brook bench was licking it right there. I mean, Conk had a great play 
against Sheridan. Remember, he picked up, or he got a stick check there, and then picked up the ground ball, and then Sheridan came down and repaid the favor as Parks has it. He has falls as he shoots it. Four seconds left in the shot clock as it ran an extra second, so now it's down to three. Got to imagine that Hofstra is not going to do anything with it. They did it on their first possession, as there it goes. Colton Rudd will send it to the near side corner. Horn will sound shot clock violation for the Hofstra Pride. Sony Brook will take it back the other way, but still. I like the look. Say not an uh, yeah. offensive possession that led to a goal for the Hofstra Pride, but they got plenty of looks. A good shot there by Parks that led at the end. They had a good look with Gerard Kane as he got that block down in front by Conk, but still two really good looks as Stony Brook is able to get it over that midfield line on the stick of Noah Armitage. Trey Parks has been a really good surprise for this Hofstra team all year and is really coming into his own the second half of this season for Coach Tierney. Well, Button with it now on the far side. He's going to send it up top to number 51, Matt Anderson. As Anderson goes to that H, the Hofstra logo, and he sends a long pass to the Helen. The Helen now to Armitage. Quick pass is there. Passing back and forth. Back to Behelen. Behelen looking over his options. He's going to find it in number 51. Matt Anderson, but a moving pick is called against Stony Brook. So with 11.54 left in this second quarter, Hofstra gets it back. They have a chance to make their third offensive possession so far. Already up by one. Yeah, this is going to be a big possession for Hofstra. If they can get a two-goal lead here, you know, it wasn't as fast a start as we've seen them do multiple times this year, but it's been a good start to say the least for Hofstra as they're not really down, but they're still up, but it's off, awfully close right now, Jack. So it's a one-goal game, but yeah. one thing the Hofstra might have done really well so far in this one has forced Stony Brook to play to their pace, and they've been able to slow it down and really speed up the game at will so far in this one. As Sheridan has, he'll send a pass back to Trevor Natalie, another guy besides Parks who's really surprised and played well so far in this season as a Sheridan gets it right back. He's being marked up there by Dan Newton as Newton and has it. Trying to shimmy around him is Sheridan. Sheridan has no options. Fakes a pass and then sends one to Kane as Kane then goes to Natalie. So Natalie will try exactly what Sheridan did. Spins off on the near side running. Has no options. Going to send it back behind the net to Colton Rudd at X. So Rudd will start up. He gets a pick set there for Natalie. Doesn't use it as Rudd is on the far side looking over his options. Back to net. He has a teammate in Kane, but he'll go back by the net to Natalie. Natalie attempts to find a cutting Audrey, but he'll pick up the ground ball as he loses it. Natalie with it, cutting to the front. He gets hit, and a flag will fly as it will go as a man up for the Hofstra Pride. It was head contact against Natalie, I'm going to assume. Yeah, that was a good opportunity for Trevor Natalie, to say the least, but really for Hofstra, I like the way their offense has looked. I don't think we've seen them with this much fluidity all year, Jack. There's confidence there, and you got to imagine, again, Coach Tierney knows what's at stake. We said in the pregame show yep. that on that whiteboard in the Hofstra locker room, you know that it was CAA tournament is on the line. Go out and do it. We saw it after that game in Monmouth. Him address the crowd, or him address the team, how proud he was, how much he believes that they made Hofstra's community proud with that win. And ever since then, it seems that they've hit a new stride in their season. Only 30-second penalty here for Hegarty, so... Hobbs are one for one today on the man advantage. That goal was scored by Gerard Kane, who has it sent the pass to Rudd as Hofstra passing around a long cross field pass sent up top to Rory Jones, who goes to Rudd. Rudd playing opposite to where he normally plays as he will pass back and forth with Ryan Woodland. Five seconds left on the man up as Woodland cuts his way in the middle. Gerard Kane has it, sends one to Woodland. Woodland can't handle it. Hofstra tries a scoop shot there from Madsen, but getting out to meet it is J-Mo McLaughlin. What a save from McLaughlin. That's his fourth or third of the game. That's a great save by McLaughlin, Jack, because that was so fast. I mean, sure, his stick was in the right spot, but that's hard to stop as a goalkeeper. It's really, with how fast Madsen put it on, especially unexpectedly as well. And that's a heads-up play by Madsen, really not to pick up the ground ball, but rather to just try and shovel it on net, but... Jamo able to get out and make that save as he keeps it a one goal game. And obviously remember he was he got banged up on a shot from Rory Jones in the second quarter or in the first quarter that had him leave for just a little bit as now Stony Brook has it. They will pass it around the top as it goes nearly back behind the net. It's still on the stick of Decharo. So Stony Brook 
with it. Lost ball there as Carlo will have it back after he dropped the pass. Carlo cutting in, looking for a shot. He's going to shoot it over the net, but two players for Stony Brook are in the area in number 34, Palinetti, but... It's going to go for the Hofstra Pride. Yeah, I don't know if you saw anything there, Christian, I, that I missed. I, 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 Hard to see, but Hofstra gets it. And you know what? That is big for them no matter what. It's something that we did see a little bit last night when the men, or when the women's teams played each other as a flag will fly yep. on the field. It'll go against Stony Brook. Got to imagine with just the positioning, it's going to be an illegal procedure call. But we saw last night there were a few times where Stony Brook had the ball and Hofstra had the ball and they shot one over the net, but because there was a player in the area, the refs deemed it as a pass and a turnover. So that might have been what the call was here. Seven over the field right now for Stoner. Because they took the penalty, they can put seven over at this point. I see a lot of coaches tell their players, just go over. You already took the penalty. So they'll try to defend with an extra man right here for potentially the rest of the shot clock, which is down to 34. Smart move, as you said, by head coach Anthony Gillardi, as why not? It's not like they can give you any more pounding than they have already are going to give you, as Hofstra still has it on the near side. It's with Parks as he cuts from behind the net from near side to far. He's going to spin off, look for a pass there in Rudd, and then he finally takes it. So Hofstra with it, 14 seconds left on the shot clock. It's with Elder. Elder high-stepping, looks for his options, shoots it, bounce shot. It just goes wide. But Hofstra's going to go on the man advantage another here. Another 30-second one. So another 30-second, and it will go against Stony Brook. We'll see exactly who goes to the box. There's no one yet. It looks like the player making his way there is number 53, Caleb Pearson. And it will be Pearson who will serve it for the Seawolves. So Hofstra, one for two so far this evening on their man up. And they had one that looked good. And then their last one most recently was a lot of passing, not a lot of shooting. They've got another 30 seconds to make something happen as Woodland gets it and sends the pass to Rudd. Rudd need to get something quick here. Rudd to Kane. As Kane has it off a pass from Sykes. Over to Rudd. Rudd to the near side here where Rory Jones has it. Jones looks to the pass from Madsen. Madsen gets it back to Jones. Whip pass to Sykes. Sykes in the middle. Shot. It just goes over the net. And Good Gerard by, Kane yeah. has it. But another great stick check there by Sean Conk. That's the second time he's done it against Gerard Kane. It has a great stick check there, Jack. So Hofstra still has it. 30 seconds left on the shot clock as that penalty will expire. We go back to even strength as a shovel shot there is taken by Justin Sykes. It's going to go wide, but backing it up for the Hofstra Pride is John Madsen. So Madsen will start it for Hofstra. So Madsen looking over options. He is being marked again by Dan Newton as Newton using that long stick to pressure him. He's going to have to send a pass long to Justin Sykes. As Sykes has it in the middle, he cuts to the far side. Shimmy's around, has some options. Go to Woodland. Woodland playing a little bit more than he normally does. That shot goes just wide of the net. Colton Rudd playing back up. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah. So time to do something. But Hofstra has to be decisive as they send their attacking unit off. As it'll be run down in terms of clock by Colton Rudd. He sends to the far side corner. And that's the third shot clock yeah. violation of the evening for the Hofstra Pride. But I don't hate that if you're Coach Seth Tierney because you're getting looks. They're just not falling. You're waiting for them to fall at this point. You think at this point, Jack, when you look at the offensive players they've used, it's just all hands on deck at this point for Coach Tierney. And it really seems like that way to me. And obviously, they know what they're playing for. Both teams need to win this to clinch their ticket to the CAA tournament, which will be held next week, as Christian said, down in Delaware. As Stony Brook looking to try and tie this game back up once more is with Palinetti. Palinetti on the near side. He gets a pick set for him by number 16, Noah Armitage, but he'll send a pass to Behelen. Helen now to the far side where it gets that alley and Matt Anderson. Matt Anderson cutting through the middle. Palladay shoots it just wide over the left side of that cage. You need so the, the stick. It was a little, the ball was a little slippy there for him on that one. I think I think it probably affected that shot a little bit. He had plenty of room there. It could have been an overcompensation for a sticky ball or the ball just kind of slid out there. Yep. But it still will remain with the Seawolves. Armitage has it. He sends a pass in, but it's going to get knocked down. How we're picking up is Will Button back behind the net, and he goes back to Armitage. So Armitage is one on one there with Dalton Sees. He cuts it back behind the net. Pass across, and it is picked off by Matt Gates. And right now, 
Gates, while not facing a lot of shots in this quarter, has looked great. There's 5.30 left, still 3-2 Hofstra. Ford with ball here, no goalie out, so the net is not empty, but Hofstra just trying to stretch the field wide open though, however. And they do it there as it gets over that midfield line with Corey Kale as he will slow it down. He's waiting for the right players to get on. The closest one to him is Sykes, and he'll send a nice little pass to him. Doesn't need to reinvent the wheel as coming on for the Hofstra Pride is Rory Jones. So Sykes still has it. He's in the midfield area. He's about to cross that midfield circle and gets that big H here at midfield of James M. Stewart Stadium. He sends a short little pass to John Madsen. Madsen over to Elder. Elder on the near side, cutting across the middle. He gets a pick set by... Sykes, but nothing happens there as he will back out. So still with it for the Hofstra Pride is Elder. He gets cross-checked off, sends a pass to Kane that bounces in front of him. Kane whips a shot on, and it's saved there by J-Mo McLaughlin. So McLaughlin's made some saves Yep. that was a hard shot there taken by Gerard Kane. He says if Matt Gates can do it, I can do it as well. So good, good action here back and forth between these two teams. Still only one goal scored in this second quarter as we were tied at two as Sykes opened up the scoring early in quarter number two. So still trying to tie it back up is Stony Brook as Palinetti has it. He's going to send a quick pass short to Noah Armitage as Armitage gets it back behind the net as Behelen has it. Looking over his option, sends one out, top shot and scores! Jonathan Huber says abracadabra with that shot, able to get it up over the waiting stick of Matt Gates, and we're tied back up at three. Well, he ri absolutely ripped that one past Gates, and that might give this Sony Brook team some momentum coming back, Jack, with, with the way they've been playing offensively, and now the pride, again, Patterson's done great in the playoffs, uh, not in the playoffs, on the faceoffs, as he'll have to go for another one year. Five wins so far at that face-off X for him as it is 5-2 to two in favor of him and the Hofstra Pride as we have a new face-off guy for Stony Brook and Robbie Smith. Both teams still fighting for it. No one seems to get on the end of it and Hofstra finally able to come out of that one with a win as Johnny on the spot, Corey Kale able to pick it up. He's going to take it back to face-off X and we have a timeout called on the field. It's going to be a timeout for Coach Seth Tierney and the Hofstra Pride. I think it's just to calm down everyone and get the right person Personnel out on the field. Right now, 342 left in the second quarter. You want to go out of this quarter and this half with the lead. So I think that's the plan right now for Seth Tierney. And this is a big possession. You have 73 to go on the shot clock. You use this possession to the best of your ability here if you're the pride. And we talk about guys that you don't really want to see on the offensive side. And one of them is Corey Kale. Obviously, you love to see him in the yeah. defensive end of the field. But he's come up with some big plays he offensively has made this some year. Big plays, but Obviously a smart timeout call if your coach Seth Tierney because you got a guy there who can get into an offensive bind, an offensive pickle yeah. with just not being as stout offensively. However, again, as you said, he's made some plays still. If you're Coach Tierney, you have 342 left to play in this half, and you have a chance to take the lead once more. Yeah. As you've played a majority of this game right now with the lead, but you haven't really been able to extend it, and that's been because of some strong sliding plays by the by the Stony Brook Seawolves defense and just some missed shots. Obviously, we have some two huge plays that have been made by Sean Conk yeah. as he's been able to disrupt a Gerard Kane shot on two occasions. But other than that, Hofstra's done a really good job at slowing down and condensing their plays and just making the quick pass for shots. And they've had three shot clock violations that we've talked about, but that has been one part because of how slow they're playing, but also they really haven't been able to find too much open areas inside the zone that have been run by Stony Brook. And also, I mean, they've done a good job of getting opportunities. I mean, look at the shots in total in this game. Hofstra has thrown 18 on and three sa four saves made by McLaughlin. Now they have a big opportunity here just to get that back. They're going to have the Natalie Sheridan and it's going to be Trey Parks, the third out there with them, with the regular three offensive unit. Actually, it's just Kane and Elder and, and Rudd. Rudd. So, Those are the three in offense on the attack for Pride. Coach Tierney put his 
units in a blender, obviously, with that timeout. And obviously, that's probably another factor of that timeout for him so he can get them and know their positions. As Sheridan is able to spin off a defender, he gets a stick check, nearly still able to hold on to it. Pulls over a defender! What a goal for Ryan Sheridan! And he gets a man who has been the boogeyman for the Hofstra Pride in Sean Cog on his back, gets up and does a fist bump in anger. But Hofstra has taken the lead yet again, and Sheridan gets back to the bench. A big man on campus there, as Hofstra Pride have a lead with Sheridan's fourth goal of the season. It is 4-3, 3.07 left to play in this half. What an individual effort by Ryan Sheridan. That is one of the best efforts you'll see on a goal for a long time here at this program. To go around two different men, to to spin around, get by a check. He had Stony Brook's bench in his ear the whole time. For him to go through all of that and score an incredible goal, that is big for Hofstra. Yeah, Mile Estrella was all over him for a little bit. And he was standing right in front of that, that Stony Brook bench, yep. as you said. And we've said it, Stony Brook's bench has been animated. They've been loud the whole game. And going on a offensive opportunity there, if you're Sheridan, to have that kind of pressure behind you, to come up and score as Danny DeSanti found himself in the Hofstra offensive zone. He's able to get off and shift for Justin Sykes. But to go in and do that kind of individual effort, it is a not only does it give your team the lead, but it quiets down a loud bench that you can tell they're not as loud, they're not as animated. They're still going to be loud for this game. But if you can do everything you can to shut them up at any point, that is huge for Hofstra. And definitely so. And now you continue here as Parks has it. Parks has it, sends a pass out wide to Kane. Kane looks over his options, then sends it back to Parks. Parks has plenty of space. He cuts to the right. Kick save there by McLaughlin, but no one can get on the end of that rebound. Finally, it's taken by number 42, Michael Sabella, as he has to send one to McLaughlin. And McLaughlin, high pass that nearly is over the reach of Dan Newton. All right, correction, that's number 55. That's Sean Conk, but a lost pass there. Flag will fly. And it might be against Hofstra. I believe it's going to be against Hofstra. And it looks like, based on body language, it's going to be Matt Eldridge, who threw his arms out to the side. Yep. And it's going to be holding against him. Another 30 seconds. So all the penalties in this one have been all 30-second penalties. So that's going to put Stony Brook on the man up here, down by one. This is a huge man up ahead of this half. I think if you're whoever's leading this half will have the momentum shift in their side. And we, again, if this goes the way that it could go, and Stony Brook's able to tie it back up, and we end this first half tied yet again as yeah. both teams at this point. Stony Brook's able to score. Both teams have scored two in each respective quarter, so it's just been tight. No real room to breathe so far in this one as Stony Brook starts up their man-up opportunity. Jonathan Huber has it. He passes back and forth with Armitage. Is it pass in, and a flag will fly, and a goal is given there. As getting on the end of it, Matt Anderson, but a flag flew, so yeah. I think it's got to go against the Hofstra Pride there. And the one thing I was about to say before that goal happened, it's a big goal for Stony Brook. Tom Ford was not on the field. He was being he was being stretched on the sideline while that man up was going on. So that's a big loss for Hofstra, but he's back in the field right now, so that is huge. But now it's tied at four. You have a faceoff here. It will remain even. No flag was given. And goal officially is going to go to Matt Anderson. That's his 26th of the season for Hofstra. It was Blake Cooling who took over for Ford as that faceoff is won. Waiting for it for the pride is Colton Rudd who gets it and he gets hit around and a timeout, timeout. will be called. It'll be another timeout here is called by Coach Seth Tierney. So with a minute 33, Hofstra with a chance to take the lead back again. We've seen this plenty of times this game where they've given up the goal and then yeah. immediately they've been able to get a response and got to imagine that Coach Tierney is trying to draw something up. And last time he did so, it led to that goal scored by number 55, Sherry Ryan Sheridan. Yeah, so I think right now you have 70 second, 77 seconds on the shot clock. It's a 13-second differential between game and shot clock. But if that's my math. I'm not a math major. Anyway, I think for Hofstra, they just go on right now and just try to get a goal. And obviously, that's the key. You continue to open up the Stony Brook defense. I think that's another thing you're going to have to look at here. Yeah, seven, 77 on the shot clock, 133 on the game clock. And I, did you say 13 or 16 seconds? I, said, I think I said 13. It's 16 seconds. All right, so I was, I was off. 
I don't not a math. I don't know math either. So yeah. I don't know why I'm trying to say, oh, your math is a little bit yeah. off there, Christian, because I know for a fact that my math could very easily be off myself, and yeah. I will have said yours was wrong for no reason. But. Both teams are getting ready to break their huddle as Stony Brook themselves will go first in this Hofstra offensive unit, which is being coached up by associate head coach John Gorman, will finally break as Coach Tierney goes in. He has his final say, and now Hofstra will go back on offense. It looks like they're going to be running with Colton Rudd, Matt Elder, Rory Jones, Gerard Kane, and Justin Sykes as John Madsen will now come in off the bench for Hofstra. So that is what Coach Tierney will be running off of the timeout here as play will be started up by number 12, Matt Elder, as he's going to start on that A of the written Hofstra logo on this near side alley. Immediately, he'll send it past to Madsen. They goes through his legs. He jumped up to get it as he fights for the ground ball. He's going with Mile Estrella, and he's able to swat that one away from Mile Estrella as he picked it up. So it's going to be with Hofstra as Madsen's able to correct that error that he made. Good effort there from Madsen to keep with the ball there. That's the second high-intensity, high-effort play that we've seen Hofstra make. Obviously, go back to that first quarter as it was a lost ball from Sheridan that he raced back on defense and was able to get a stick check of his own. So right now it's still with Madsen. Minute left in this first half is Madsen is going to hold. So Hofstra not even moving around. Everyone is stagnant on the field. Only player in the area is Elder. He is wide open as Madsen. Obviously, this has to be something from Coach Seth Tierney. Yeah. And it looks like Madsen's going to load up. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one with his offender, I think. No, immediately he will pass to Elder as Elder will do it himself. He's looking over his options. He gets cross-checked off by Mila Estrella as now Gerard Kane has it. Fakes a pass back to Elder. Then he goes to Madsen. Madsen near side to Jones. Jones cutting across the field, looking over any of his options. He tried to pass to Kane. High shot, fake, then low in a key save again. Colton Rudd had it for the pride. Hofstra is going to lose it, but a positional save made wow. there by Jamo McLaughlin as he lost sight of it, and it just hit off his leg. A long pass there. Good defensive unit by Daniel Oaks is a huge hit is thrown there by Tim Hegarty, but the horn will sound. Oh no, because there was a loose ball foul called Jack. That's going to stay with Stony Brook for maybe a I half a second or a second. They're going to talk it over here, but that's going to stay with Stony Brook because the referee had his hand up ready for a loose ball foul. So we will see how long this goes to Stony Brook. They'll be in a the corner no matter what, so not like it will be worth a shot unless the, right now they're... It's with Palinetti. Yeah. Like, that's who has it right now and he's for Stony Brook. And he is... He's creeping up. He's, he's making his way. I don't know if that's exactly where the ref wanted him. He was a little bit closer where that that loose ball foul happened. It was at the second A of the CAA logo on the near side here. But Palinetti's making... They're going to call a timeout here too. Yeah, that's... So, got to do that. You can't take him with you. They're going to call a timeout. See how much time is put on the clock here. Stony Brook is going to try for one last gasp shot. We'll see exactly what it is, but if you are Stony Brook, what is the, the play you have to draw up here if you're head coach Anthony Gillardi? If it's more than two seconds, quick pass and shot. If it's about a second and a half, I think you just go for a quick shot as fast as you can. So we'll see how much time is put on here, but this is a kind of a big moment to say the least, you know, depending on how much time is left. We're talking about last second goals, and the easy one to flash yourself back to is the end of the first quarter between the Pride and Syracuse's. Yeah. A face-off was won in a just long shot. Samoletso. Was taken yep. by Samoletso, and it just able so to... So just a second flat. They're going to put a second flat, so I think if I think you want to give it to Palinetti here. I, I think also another thing is, do they give it to Palinetti and have it with uh, uh, or they pick another player. I think our keeper Palinetti, the question is where are they going to spot the ball for him? Is it going to be at that C or the CAA logo? And it looks like it will be, yes. Yeah, he's That's a tough angle, and they're going to have Daniel Oaks on him. Yeah, Oaks is going to try and give the I think as Hofstra, little space double. as possible. Yeah, i got to imagine Palinetti is going to... 1.1 1 .1 as he on gets, the clock. He immediately starts shifting, so he's going to yeah. be called back. So 1.1 1 .1 on the clock, so that... 
one millisecond is going to make all the difference in the world as we see Matt Gates just lined up shot just wow. goes wide but that was a whipper of a shot by Palinetti and he gets drilled Whoa. by a Hofstra player it was Jazzy Watson who threw a shoulder into Palinetti so I don't know if there's going to be a call on that one as Palinetti is arguing his case with the referee closest to him but Jazzy Watson as he walked by threw a shoulder into Palinetti so, got to see where that leads us, but we're going to take a break. When we come back, we will have the halftime show as we break down all of the events of the first half of play between the Hofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Men's Lacrosse, presented by Flow Sports at 88.7 FM, WRHU. Back to James M. Sheward Stadium as we are through one half of play and we have yet to really get any distance yeah. between these two fierce rivals as Stony Brook and Hofstra are tied at four as this is well advertised as a heated game between two intense rivals, a Long Island rivalry game. And it has lived up to the billing, not only in terms of that, but as two teams desperately clawing, fighting everything they can to get their way to the CAA tournament. Once again, my name is Jack Carthy, joined alongside by Christian Gardecki. And Christian, a wacky first yeah. half at times, a gritty first half at times, a chippy first half at times, and we are still tied at four. Just these teams are deadlocked. No one's been able to get a goal lead in this one as Ofstra and Stony Brook are just playing each other tooth and nail to the point. I mean, a lot of shots too. Both teams, Hofstra with 21 shots, 13 for Stony Brook. I mean, you look at the possessions of this game, it's kind of been even, but the stats don't really show it. I mean, these two teams are going back and forth. I think Hofstra's got a little more time on offense, but I mean, it's just been really impressive to see how this Pride team has played offensively, especially with so many moving pieces in the lineup in and out all year. It's really been a, something that Coach Tierney's been telling us all year as well. Again, uh, just a gross night, too, in general. Yeah. Is it's been rainy and windy and cold and damp all night long, but that really hasn't slowed down both offenses in terms of yeah. overall production as we have seven different goal scorers in this one. Is the only... I guess not unique goal scorer we have so far is Matt Anderson who has two goals in the game but in terms for Stony Brook their other goal scorers are number 34 Dylan Palinetti and number 44 Jonathan Huber for Hofstra Gerard Kane Justin Sykes Matt Elder or it's not Matt Elder so Gerard Kane Justin Sykes Chase Patterson scoring his first career goal and Sheridan have been able to score for the Hofstra Pride as they have four different goal scorers as we are still tied at four apiece and we go to the goaltending matchup. Matt Gates, he has made some big saves in this one. Three saves, two of which have been some 10 bell kick saves on the other side. McLaughlin, Jamo McLaughlin has made six total saves on 10 total shots on goal. He has looked stellar in this one despite in the first quarter going down with a tough shot that hit him off of a shot from Rory Jones. Yeah, and I think when you look at it, Jack, I mean, both teams have really come out with some good plays. You look at the other side for Stony Brook, they've had some very good opportunities. I've been really impressed with Anderson Palinetti. He's coming as advertised. I mean, when you look at the stats coming to the game, you're saying, this guy's almost got 50 goals. He could get to 50 goals today if he wanted to, but right now it's all about it. I think another thing, too, is how low scoring this game has been. And you and I were talking before saying, hey, this is going to be a big defensive game. I think playoff of lacrosse is that way at times. It also can be high scoring. I think this is one of those games that both teams don't want to let in too much because you never know if a different team going to run. We've seen so many times this year where Hofstra has let up a run and the opposing team just goes on a huge offensive run that has really demoralized Hofstra and really has been their, their downfall for multiple games this year. We talk about a threat of a run. We're getting into the third quarter, which historically, at least this season, has been the bugaboo for this Hofstra Pride team. They've obviously had been close. They've had tough games, but there has been numerous occasions where they've been close in a game, and then the third quarter, they let it slip away for five, six minutes. But that's enough, really, to let these teams get away from them. And then when they get to the fourth quarter, 
the Pride themselves go on a retaliatory run, yeah. but there's not enough time for them really to capitalize on it. So if you're Coach Tierney, that's like the number one thing you've got to be talking with your coach or with your team is how do we make sure that this third quarter goes the way we want it to go and we can go into the fourth quarter with a goal lead, two goals lead, and at the very least, we're only down by one or two ourselves. Yeah, and, and I think that's going to be the key for Coach Tierney and his team is can they get that lead but also try to extend it? I think that's something to... I have a feeling that this second half is going to be a half of runs. One team will go on a big offensive run and that will lead them to a win. Who? I don't know at this point. I mean, there's still a lot of time to figure that out. But I also think another key to this one has been the face-off. I mean, eight face-off wins for Chase Patterson, really forcing Stony Brook to switch it up on the face-offs as well. That will be a key down come to the come the game because Chase Patterson has been that guy all year. You know, there's been a couple games where Tierney has tried to switch things up. But I think right now Chase Patterson is going to be the face-off guy for this game, and he has been very impressive all year, and tonight is no exception. Yeah, for the Hops Pride, we've only seen Chase Patterson. For Stony Brook, we've seen two different face-off takers. They started with Declan Mitchell, who for a little bit was subbed off for Robbie Smith, but Mitchell has come back on, and he's been taking the face-offs as of late, but it has not been a change in wins no. for Chase Patterson. Obviously, he's got eight wins in a total of ten total face-offs as that's 8-4, the goals that have been scored, and the two for the start of the game and the start of the second quarter. And obviously, we talk about the dominance that Patterson had. We touched on it real quick, but he has his first career goal in this one as he played a huge factor in the start of yeah. that second quarter. Big thanks to Stephen Gortop for getting us that stat as well. Chase Patterson, I mean, I think he is probably the key player at this point in this game, Jack. Not just the goal, not just the face-offs, but what his team is really, how they, they've hyped themselves around him, being a senior player, being a guy who is really a, an emotional leader to this team. And I think there's a couple other guys you could you know, put in that as well. And I'm really interested to see what they do offensively, how many different guys they'll fit in, how who will be the guy that they have at the end of this game. And I think that's going to be very, very important to look at and very interesting to look at, to say the least. And as we talk about it, we have a team in terms of trying to get the defense started, and defense has been huge in this one. One player that we can circle from Stony Brook is Sean Conk, who yeah. is just all over the field. New, he's all over the field. He's disrupted a play against Ryan Sheridan. He disrupted two shots against Gerard Kane. He's been everything that Stony Brook has needed on the defensive side. And then we flip it for Hofstra. They've kind of gotten gone still with that three-headed yeah. monster that they have in terms of starter. Tom Ford's made plays. Tim Hagerty's made plays. No one's made bigger plays all season than Daniel Oaks yeah. in terms of using the physicality. We always talk about guys go for that ground ball. He always looks to hit and he looks to hit hard as he has been able to disrupt numerous offensive opportunities for the Seawolves team. But we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll do a full stats read and keys to the second half between the Hofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Men's Across, presented by 88.7 FM, WRHU, and Flow Sports. Back to James M. Schuert Stadium as we are just a minute and a half away from second half action between Hofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves. Once again, my name is Jeff Garthy, joined alongside by Christian Gardecki and Christian. Both teams are fighting for their lives in terms of getting to the CAA tournament. Only one can make it, and that's going to be the winner of this one. And we'll go to Keys to the second half as we are deadlocked at four as we know that the winning team is going to get sprinkles. They're going to yep. get their chance to go. The Mr. To Softy see is outside, maybe. The Mr. Softy is outside, but what is your key if you're head coach Anthony Gallardi and the Stony Brook Seawolves team? And for Stony Brook, it's just to get off to a good start offensively. I think you have to have Anderson, Palinetti, and Huber, and Button, and all these guys get off to a good offensive start. On the other side, for Hofstra, you have to stop those guys. I mean, that's really simple as it is. Try to stop those guys and, you know, don't play to the factor that, you know, play a 0-0 zero, zero game. 4-4, it, it, you know, it's a 0-0 zero, zero game. Just play to the factor that, hey, 
our season is on the line, and that's both teams, I think, at this point, knowing their seasons are on the line. Once again, the scenario is this. Hofstra wins. They are into the CAA tournament. They'll be the four seed and will play Delaware on Thursday. For Stony Brook, they win. They get the three seed because of a tiebreaker with Towson. They will play against Drexel on Thursday at Delaware Stadium. So it's all simple as that. Uh, it's, and Dan Arestia of Inside the Cross called this game the game of the day to watch. That's a big thing, too. Also, you talk about that Towson game. They beat Delaware earlier today, so a huge upset. They are looking to make themselves a presence in the CAA tournament. And as you said, Christian, for Hofstra Pride, it's got to be business as usual in terms on the defensive side. And for Stony Brook, find a way to get themselves activated as Patterson will go early on the opening face off here as Stony Brook dressed in their away blue jerseys with white lettering and numbering, a red trim around those letters and numbers with white and red trim on their sleeves and a beautiful chrome helmet will be moving from right to left across your radio dial TV screen. And for the option prize, a flag flies there, shot and scores. So an early goal here for Stony Brook as strumming the guitar is Matt Anderson. Anderson. He now has a hat trick on the evening as it's 5 to 4 Stony Brook early in this one, just 19 seconds into the second half. 27th year, third of the game for Matt Anderson. Yeah, I said it. If Hofstra wants to do it, if Stony Brook wants to do it, they have to hit, get, get those big three to score. Hofstra, the same thing to stop those big three. And I think that's a great start for Stony Brook that comes off with a face off violation. Now we go back to the face off X here as Patterson will wrap up against Mitchell. Yeah, again, it starts at the faceoff there as Patterson goes early and taking it back the other way are the Seawolves as Patterson wins it back to himself. He loses it for a second, but he's able to catch it in midair as he runs back towards his crease. But Stony Brook starting with a hot, heavy press as Hofstra dressed in their alternate yellow jerseys with blue lettering and numbering and a white trim around those letters and numbers as well as on the sleeves. They're wearing white helmets, white shorts, with a yellow and blue stripe on. Rain is picking up, as Jack. The rain is starting to pick up again. As right here at James M. Short Stadium, the weather is 53 degrees with a wind from east to west. That's coming across the field. Yep. And it, the rain has been off and on all night, but it's starting to pick up yet again as Elder has it for the pride. He's going to send one to Gerard Kane. As Hofstra moving from left to right across your TV screen radio dial in this third quarter. Gerard Kane still has, he's being harassed there by Conk as Kane still has it going against Conk. Whips a shot over the net there as Rudd has it back behind for Hofstra as trying to thread the needle for the pride was Gerard Kane trying to pick a corner there. Trying to slip and fill there with, with Sykes the whole time. So still with it for the Pride is Rudd. He's going to send it back to Kane as Kane just going right over his defender. He gets a shtick in the head, but no flag will fly. Is That one's going to get lost by Sykes. Hofstra still fighting for it. Madsen has it. Madsen still looking for it. And that'll do be a shot clock violation. Fourth shot clock violation of the evening for the Pride is getting in is Christian Loud as he's still on the offensive side as Stony Brook has it. Shot saved there. That like shot was taken by Palinetti. As either way, it's still going to be with Stony Brook as that shot was taken by a Palinetti who is going from far side to near and just took a shot across the grain. I think I got, got both Matt Gates and a piece of the crossbar. That was just a hard shot yep. there as we start up. Will Button has it for Stony Brook who now find themselves with a one goal lead as they lead it for the first time since it was 2-1 to one back in the first quarter. So 5-4, to 12.50 left to play as Stony Brook still has a pass back behind the net as it makes its way up top to Palinetti. Palinetti doing the same thing he did on that most recent shot. He has to send a pass to a teammate in Pearson. Pearson goes back behind the net where it finds its way onto the stick there of Button. Button at X, up to Palinetti. Palinetti loads up for a shot, but he has nothing as he's going to go to Pearson. Pearson attempted a pass in the middle, but it gets picked off by Tom Ford, who's going to take it back the other way for the pride. He sends a pass to Kane, and he gets himself involved on the action as Kane sends a quick pass to Elder as Ford will give himself up, and he's going to trot his way back to midfield there as he's followed by Palinetti. So back by the net, still with it for the Hofstra Pride. It's going to go up top on that far side alley to Ryan Sheardon. So Sheardon's still with it. He's cutting across the middle of the field. 
as he slowly walks, cradling it there on his right side as he will start up his play. The most recent goal scorer for the Hofstra Pride, he's being shadowed there by Mila Estrella. Sheridan still with it, sends it back behind the net to awaiting Rudd. Rudd back to Pierce, or to Sheridan, as that's actually Kane. Sheridan has it, flag flies off the post, but it's gonna be a man up opportunity for the Hofstra Pride. I think finally, Sean Conk will go to the box. As no, actually it's gonna be David Mile Estrella, it looks like. Well, that's gonna still be a big man up here for Hofstra now. The question is, is it a, f a, t a minute or a half minute? It's a, it's a one minute, so that's a, Good long man advantage, long as in a minute, for Hofstra right here, Jack. Well, it's been a chippy choppy game all evening for both teams, really fighting, and no one really has been able to just circumvent the pressure given by either defense. That's going to be a minute there against Mila Estrella, so yep. Hofstra's going to have plenty of time here, but again, no one's been able to really circumvent and get through this pressure that has been both teams have been giving defensively as Sykes has it, passes over to Kane. Kane up top to Woodland, where Hofstra will start up. Now it's on the stick of Colton Rudd. Rudd to Jones, back to Rudd, over to Kane on the near side here, then it goes to Sykes, back to Kane. Hofstra, quick passes here, but all on the perimeter, as now it's with Rudd, as whistle will oh, blow, moving pick. moving pick, it looked like it was gonna go against Ryan Woodland, so Stony Brook now takes it back the other way, 35 left on the man up opportunity, so they can just kill the rest of that, and Hofstra has a chance to go by the wayside. They have to, Hofstra's defense has to go out here, you have to double the ball, they're, they're up a man, double the ball. As Pearson has it, I yeah, unfortunately to had to go out. So yeah, Hofstra, Kalen. Kale now has it, still on the far side with Caleb Pearson. As he looks over his options, he has a teammate in Matt Anderson who has a hat trick in this one. Coming onto the field is Noah Armitage, and a short pass is sent there. As now Armitage has it for the Sea Wolves, they are killing down time. And that'll do it. They are back to even strength here. His Armitage still has it for the Sea Wolves. He sends a quick little pass over to Matt Anderson. As Anderson cuts it, he's going against Danny DeSanti. As Anderson looks over passes, then he's going to find a teammate in Palinetti. So Palinetti cuts across the field. Then he sends over to Armitage. Armitage running in, sends a pass back up top. Shot off the pole there of Gates. As another shot off the rebound, and it's a goal as Jonathan Huber is able to pick up that rebound and he's going to make it a two goal game for the first time all evening and Christian you said it at halftime this second half could be a one of runs and so far we have our longest run of the game as Jonathan Huber gets his 28th of the season 6 to 4 10 11 left to play in this third quarter well, that comes off the rebound from Matt Gates and there's nothing Gates could do about it but Huber had the awareness to see there was a lot of open spaces. Patterson has a chance here. Patterson already has a goal on this one. Passes over, shot just wide. As that shot again was taken by Colton Rudd. And right now we've seen it. Patterson is winning these faceoffs to himself. And then he sends a quick little pass out to Colton Rudd because he knows the defense is going to shade off of him. Yep. So Sykes now has it for the pride. He sends it up to Trey Parks. If you're Hofstra, you have to score on this possession. Just keep it a one-goal game as long as you can. So Parks with it, he's on the near side, he now cuts it all the way to the far side. He's spelling out the Hofstra, he gets the S and then spells it back at the <laughs> H. So Trey Parks still with it, 49 seconds left on the shot clock, 9.37 left on the game clock. As Parks is trying to find something, he's going to find a teammate in Gerard Kane. Kane going one-on-one -on -one with Dan Newton, hesitates off, pass over to Elder. Elder trying to get a shot, jump, shot, scores! What a goal for the Hofstra Pride and Matt Elder. He makes it back a one-goal game, 5-6, to 9.26 left to play in the third quarter. But that's a great first step for Hofstra as a cookie is found there for a cutting Matt Elder, and he makes it a one-goal game once more. That's a great shot by Elder because he cuts in, gets that space. He decides to just take that shot, Jack, and that is big for Hofstra. Now, can Patterson redeem himself with another face-off win here? If he wins it forward, that's a huge opportunity for Hofstra. We see how good they've been on those, on those forward face-off wins today. Goal number 19 on the season for Matt Elder. Wins picking up again. It's back to a miss. We look up across the field. Is that one one again? As you said, straight ahead. Patterson to run. Shot. Save there by McLaughlin as JMO gets his first save of this second half. And I think you should have slowed it up there if you're Hofstra because you had 
you got, you're all the way out from the perimeter on that shot by Rudd. So right now with it for Stony Brook, getting it over the midfield line is Noah Armitage as he looks over his options. He thought he had one for a second in Matt Anderson, but he's going to slow it down. So right now, Armitage slows it, pass over to Helen, back to Armitage. So Armitage right now is being shadowed by Hickis. Hickis does a cross check, sends it up top there where it has to be slowed down by Jonathan Hoover, the most recent goal scorer for the Stony Brook team. Right now it's with Behelen. Behelen looking over any of his options. He's being hit by Kales. He shoots. It goes wide. It's going to remain with Stony Brook. 35 seconds left on the shot clock. 8.34 left on the game clock here in the third quarter. Starting it up for Stony Brook will be Dylan Palanetti. As it goes wide, shot scores. Noah Armitage able to make it a two goal game once more. It's five to seven in favor of Stony Brook. 8.27 left to play in the third quarter. And Hofstra's got to find a way to hem up their defense because they are not playing to their standard that they had in that no, first half. Not, not at all. That was kind of a, a, that's one you want back defensively if you're the Hofstra defensive core. So that's one you kind of, you really need back. But now, you go back to this faceoff here, Jack, and you know it's still a two-goal game. You still have a lot of time left. It really comes down to can the pride answer each time. Patterson versus Robbie Smith. As this one's not won cleanly by Patterson, but no one can get on the end of it. Still fighting for it. Smith has it. No one has it now. Hofstra still looking. Danny Santi picks up a stick. Someone else loses it. As now it's on Patterson stick, still fighting for it. It's swept by Danny DeSanti, but no one is able to get it for the pride. And a bounce pass is sent there to Mila Estrella as he cuts in, has no one near him, whips a shot, kick save. Actually, a knee save there yeah. for Matt Gates as he threw his leg out to meet it. Now Hofstra's going to go quickly the other way as a pass sent to Rudd. Rudd loads up, is falling down as Dalton sees. Hofstra will slow it down. Christian, I saw you put your hand yeah. just to stop you it need right to stop now. it right there. You're there's no way you should rush that, especially with some of the personnel you have out there. So slowing it down, as per the request of Christian Gardecki, <laughs> is Colton Rudd. I think that was per, per Coach Tierney as well. As Michael Savella is on him, he's going to send a pass to Parks. Parks looking over who he has as he will look back to the bench. He sees Coach Tierney barking out orders. As Parks goes from the middle of the far side over to the near side, he's going to make his way to this near side alley, sends a little pass over to Gerard Kane. Kane hesitates, cuts across the middle, looks over, but he will back out as he goes in for another shot. Goes, switches hands, switches hands again. He backhand shot saved again by McLaughlin as J-Mo is just a wow. beautiful save. A dog finding a bone right there as Gerard Kane goes to blow up a defender in number 39, Dominic, Dominic Genzale. But he misses and Genzale gets it over and he goes back to the bench really wiping the sweat off his brow as he was nearly blown up by a huge presence for the Sasha Pride team. Yeah, and Kane almost almost got Rudd in, the, in that miss as well. So now, Sony Brook's going to try to slow it down here. They have a two-goal lead. They're going to try to play similarly how Hofstra plays offensively. Now, during that last possession, I think Hofstra needed to come with some urgency. Now, especially when you're down to the final 21 minutes of this game, you need urgency at this point. Sony Brook still with it. It's on the stick of Dylan Palanetti as he sends one across the field. And now we start this passing attack here for Stony Brook. It's on the stick of Blake Behelen. Behelen sends one in the middle. Shot scores off a jump there. Will Button able to find it and slot it home. It's a three goal game. Eight to five. Six oh eight left to play in the third quarter. But what a goal there from Will Button able to find that pass from Blake Behelen. Yeah, and he was just left wide open right in front. There was nobody. There was a couple defenders all over, but he was able to find a seam. And I think if you're Hofstra, you need to shore that up. At this time of the year, you should have that shored up. But right now, they that just did not. That was not a nice job at all. Again, it's going to come down to the run to this point. And Stony Brook on a 4-1 run to start this half. So a face-off, one forward by Patterson. He's able to throw his hand out and send a pass over to Colton Rudd, who then goes to Chris Barry. As Barry slowing it down, waiting for the right players to get on. Trevor Natalie will run on and get that pass from Barry. Is now Sheridan and Trey Parks will join for the Hofstra Pride. So Parks up there with Elder, Sheridan, and Natalie as Sheridan has it as he backs up 
and looks over his options. One defender in the area, Dan Newton is, that defender is switched from long pole to short pole so far as Sheridan fakes a pass, look over, and a slide there is taken by Dylan McDermott. So it goes back by the net for Hofstra with Colton Rudd. Rudd sends one to Parks. Parks cutting across the middle, shot off the post! Oh man. And Hofstra can't get one to fall there as another post is hit by an attacker. It gets picked up and sent to Ryan Sheridan as Sheridan will find one over to Natalie on the near side as he looks over at Elder who's directing traffic. So Natalie with it, Kralian on his right side cuts, or cut, Kralian on his left side cuts to his right, then back to his left as he jumps looking for option 39 cuts through the middle shot just over oh he got hit after be a bounds. flag there's yep. a flag yep and Hofstra's gonna get possession this here. might be a minute too this might be a minute and if that is a minute for Hofstra yep minute. minute they called a minute there and it looks like it's gonna go against Dan Newton as he makes his way back to the bench obviously you have to score to here see with the refs 99 is yep. the call so Dan Newton will go it'll be a minute it is releasable as they just said so with four minutes, 51 seconds left to play in this third quarter, Stony Brook has a three-goal lead. This is the largest lead that either team has had yep. as we were fighting for any sort of space. Now Stony Brook finds themselves with a little bit of it now. Hofstra needs to find a way to close that gap as it goes back behind the net for Justin Sykes, and Stony Brook's bench gets loud. Woodland pass over to Colton Rudd. Rudd to Kane. Kane looks over his options and he finds when he likes in Sykes, but then goes right back to Kane. Woodland with it. Back to Sykes on this near side of the net. Up to Woodland as we play on the near side of the field here. Hofstra still fighting for it. Rory Jones back to Rudd. No look pass to Woodland and Woodland can't get it cleanly, but losing it there and picking it up for the Hofstra pride is Gerard wow. Kane. So Hofstra gets away with one there as Rudd now has it. Rudd to Woodland on the near side. Back in the middle to Rudd. Rudd looks over options, finds it over to Kane. Kane up top to Rudd as they are in a passing triangle with Rory Jones, Gerard Kane, and Colton Rudd. Rudd loads up for a pass, finds one to Woodland. Back to Rudd on the far side to Jones. Jones has space, shot, rebound, score! No. Oh, no goal! Side of the net. They hit the side of the net. As John Madsen picked up that shot that hit off of the boot of Jamo McLaughlin and he couldn't tuck wow. it in. He had all the time and space in the world and he doesn't score. That's an unbelievable save I think by McLaughlin. That really will shape, shape this game for the way right now. Unbelievable. I am speechless as McLaughlin with the presence of mind to get out. I don't even know if he saved that or just hit the side of the net, but his presence is known as that shot is taken. Button playing the backup there as the shot was taken for Stony Brook by Noah Armitage, number 16. So on the far side now, it's with Dan Palinetti as he has Armitage up top at that midfield circle. He whips one over to the Helen. Helen directs traffic. One defender in the area, Corey Kale, as he goes to this near side alley right next to that written Hofstra logo. But Helen's still with it, being shaded by Kale. Tried a cheeky pass there, but unable to get it connected as Palinetti was the intended target. Danny DeSanti has it for Hofstra. Sends one across, but no goalie in the area. Hofstra trying to get it across midfield. They do. They get that clearing attempt as Daniel Oaks has. He's going to send one far side to another defensive player in Dalton Seas. Dalton Seas has to hold on to it, and then he's going to send a pass down low to Colton Rudd. So Hofstra Flag. still down by three. Flag Stony is Brook thrown. They, Stony Brook has Stony eight. Brook. They have eight over the field. So Parks now with it is we're going to see exactly the same thing we saw in that second quarter as Armitage will come back as they will They play have two with more this time though. Armitage came back and don't know exactly who else is back on as Hofstra still has it. Parks cutting back from behind the net. Spins around. Sends one across to Rudd. Rudd spins off a defender but he can't get in front of the net. Just avoids getting a crease violation there. And he sends a short pass trade Parks. Two minutes left in this third quarter. Still up by three. Eight to five is Stony Brook. So Hofstra still with it. Colton Rudd sends one to Gerard Kane. That one hits off the side of the net there. Might have gotten a save from McLaughlin. A jump shot attempted by Parks. He's going to lose it. It gets picked up by Stony Brook. And Hofstra will go on the man up. This will be 30 seconds for an illegal procedure. Yeah, I like the effort there. Hofstra's getting a bunch of good shots. But McLaughlin is either coming up to task 
or is forcing them to the outside with shots. Hofstra's doing a great job of getting opportunities, but now with 144 left, you need a score here. You need to at least keep it a two-goal uh -oh. game. And right now for Hofstra, Colton Rudd limping off the field with a great amount of discomfort, and that is a huge loss for Hofstra if he is gone for a extended period of time. He's been the engine so far. But Jack, they have guys who can fill right now. You look, Matt Elder just stepped out of the field in his place. He can fill in perfectly in his spot. He is a, still a presence back at yep. X. And if we talk, go back to it, J-Mo McLaughlin, he has nine saves so far on the evening as Kane gets that pass from Elder. Elder gets it from Kane. As Hofstra, quick passing here. Woodland back to Elder as he fills in for Rudd. Over to Jones on the far side, back to Elder. To Woodland, back to Elder as they pass in that triangle. Jones loads up for a shot. It just goes wide there. But playing back up for Hofstra is Justin Sykes. Ten seconds left up on the man up here. 40 seconds left on the shot clock. 123 on the game clock here in this third quarter. So Gerard Kane will get it for the Hofstra Pride. Sends it over to Elder. Elder attempted pass to Jones, then to Sykes as he is able to battle with it. Slash That's gonna stay with Hofstra. They gotta hurry. Able to get it as it's with McLaughlin who yeah. lost it. And running onto the field, Anthony Gillardi, he's trying to call a timeout. And they don't have the ball. He was all the way in the defensive zone there. He could have called something against Gillardi. Hofstra still has it. It's with Rory Jones. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. They have to move quickly as Gerard Kane takes it back to X. High stepping, cutting out front as he sends a pass there to Elder trying to spin off two and one. Elder with a shot. It goes wide. Shot clock violation for the Hofstra Pride. And running back out to a J-Mo McLaughlin jumping and pointing at the bench. Obviously, they are feeling the good vibrations right now. And they have all the momentum in the world as they get the clear as it was sent to Armitage. I think you try to score one more, try to run the clock out here if you are this Stony Brook team. So Stony Brook still with it, has it with Armitage. 20 seconds right now. Slowing it down, back behind the net is Armitage with 15 left, have to go full speed or it's nothing as Armitage shimmies out, sends a pass, spinning and shooting just wide as Jonathan Huber. I think Cooling got a piece of it blocking it in front. So it goes back behind the net, Button, have to speed up here if you're Stony Brook trying to score. Matt Anderson has it, has a hat trick on the afternoon, cutting across the middle, what a play there by Corey Kale, Superman dive, able to disrupt that. And it remains a three goal game as we head to the final quarter of action. What could be the final quarter of action between, the, or for the season for this Hofstra Pride team. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will have fourth quarter of play between Hofstra and Stony Brook, which they lead eight to five. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Men's Lacrosse, presented by 88.7 FM WRHU and Flow Sports. Welcome back to James M. Sheward Stadium here for the start of the final quarter of play between the Hofstra Pride and the Stony Brook Seawolves, which the Seawolves lead by a score of 8-5. to five. Once again, my name is Jack McCarthy, joined alongside by Christian Gardecki. And Christian, right now the Hofstra Pride on offense find themselves on the dark side of the moon searching for any sort of light against a goalie in J-Mo McLaughlin as he has made save after save to this point in the game and really has helped his team get out to this three-goal lead with his defensive play as that face-off is won there by Robbie Smith who races in trying to match Patterson and he does! It's a four-goal game and now we have two players who are face-off specialists scoring and that's not what you needed if for the Hofstra Pride, just eight seconds into this fourth quarter, they're down by four now. It's nine to five, as that is the first goal of the season for the face-off guy in Robbie Smith, the first goal of his career. So two first career goals for these two face-off guys. Yep, and you don't see face-off guys score a lot, let alone two in this one. Patterson the other way though now. Patterson trying to match and get his second goal of his career but he's unable to as a stick goes in by Christian Loud and correction on that goal scored by Robbie Smith. That was the second of his career, second of the season. As right now, Coach Seth Tierney with a scowl 
that Scrooge would be very jealous of as his team is now down by four and they go back on defense. So Blake Helen will start up for this Seawolves team as he sends a pass long across the field to Matt Anderson as Anderson will send it back to Behelen. Behelen races past Kale as he has a load up for a shot, goes back by the net, sends one long as he has Anderson. Anderson over to a teammate in Palinetti and it's now a five goal game. And right now, they are unable to do anything if you're the Hofstra Pride defensively. And they have just sunk a hole in one if you're Stony Brook as Palinetti's able to just get that one in the 90 degree corner above the left shoulder of Matt Gates. Yeah, that's just a great shot there by Palinetti showing why he's one of the best scorers in the conference. And this is just a demoralizing second half for the Pride, Jack. Especially the start two goals here. That's now six goals to start out, or to in the second half is Palinetti, 47th goal of the season, second of the evening, and Hofstra needs something here. We talked about what they needed going in to this fourth quarter. If they were down, it needed to be a one or two goal deficit. They were down by three, and now, just a minute in, they're down by five. We just crossed the 40, 14 minute mark left in this game. But off she's going to get a sense of relief as a face-off violation is called against Robbie Smith. And now Ryan Sheardon has it for the Hofstra Pride. So he looks over his options. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Retta as it goes to Sykes. Sykes sh shoves off a defender and then passes over to Elder on the far side. He has one defender in Newton trying to beat him. Shot and a goal there. So Hofstra has made the deficit back to four as Matt Elder is able to get his second goal of the evening and Hofstra back to four, 13-29 left to play in the game. Well, there's something for Hofstra to be happy about now. You have four minutes, you have 13-30 left, down by four. It is doable. We've seen it a lot in lacrosse. Can they capitalize on this and go on a run on their own? Let's go back to that face-off X as Patterson trying to do what he's done all after or all evening long and that is win a face off for his team as he does nearly but unfortunately for him as he went to pick up that ground ball it was stepped on by Corey Kale so Hofstra goes back on defense but just a Murphy's Law situation of things going wrong for them it looked like an easy win for Patterson but Kale steps on it and stops all forward momentum and now Stony Brook takes it back the other way gets on the stick of Noah Armitage so Armitage looking over his options and he passes back and forth with the teammate in Matt Anderson Armitage with it he goes against Dalton sees and beats him pass back behind the net up top now, Anderson shot and he scores. And right now, Matt Anderson with his fourth goal of the evening, you can't get him that open as he has been on fire with his shots. It's back to a five goal game, 11 to six, 12.50 left to play in the fourth quarter. And we've off to our quickest start that we've seen. Yeah, Stony Brook now is feeling it. They know they are 13 minutes away, a five goal lead. And if there was any momentum that came from that Hofstra goal, Jack, that is all washed away, literally and figuratively, with the ring. Again, the wheels continue to get wobbly and fall off as we get a holding called against Robbie Smith. So Hofstra is going to get possession of the ball. Richie Hickis has it with a chance for Hofstra to make it a four-goal game once more. And Christian, I mean, not to state the obvious here, but you have to score a goal if your coach sets here. Every Hofstra possession. Pride. You Every need possession. to be able to do whatever you can to match and stop this tidal wave of offense that Stony Brook has been throwing your way. As Hofstra has it with their most recent goal scorer, Matt Elder, who just had his 20th of the season. So Hofstra over to Sheridan. Sheridan bowls over to defender. Doesn't get him to fall as he sends a pass to Rory Jones who has to jump to get it. Jones to Elder in the middle. Elder still has it, looks over his options. He's going to fall himself. Flag will fly. It's going to go against number 42, Michael Sabella. That's another another flag. flag's going to go. So Hofstra's going to have a huge opportunity here now coming stay up. stay calm here. You cannot take any retaliation here on that hit. Stay calm of your Hofstra. A veteran move done by John Madsen. The sophomore ran from the opposite side of the field. 
and he stood in the middle of Mad Elder, who didn't look like he was going to do any retaliation, but Madsen gets yeah. in the middle and just congratulates him for a job well done. So Hofstra looks like we're going to get two penalties. It's going to be a slashing, which is called against... One minute and a 30, so I think yeah. you have to get one quick on the 30, then get a, so basically put these into two 30 second increments at this point. Yeah, so it's going to be Michael Sabella is in there and Dominic Jensale. So Jensale is going to have 30 seconds and it looks like it's going to be Sabella with a minute according to the big clock. So Hofstra starts it up and they have the two man advantage here as Elder has it to Kane. Kane with a shot, it gets knocked down in front, both teams fighting for it and it gets picked up there by Christian Loud as Loud sends to Newton. Newton nearly loses it there Almost to Rory Jones. And Newton, now using a long pull, will pass it, but he doesn't get it cleanly as his intended target falls. Oh, they called timeout. Stoyver oh, called timeout. That is a huge break for the Seawolves. But does it, I think it stays with Stony Brook, right? Yeah, Tynan Hillary was the intended target. He fell as Dan Newton's pass was behind him. And Stony Brook calls timeout, perfect timing for them. Yeah. As they are able to get away with one. So with eight seconds left on that first one, the Gen Zale penalty, there's 38 left on the second one in the Michael Sabella penalty. So for Hofstra, a moment where they needed to score, they don't even get a shot on net as that shot taken by Gerard Kane was knocked down and looking down at the Hofstra bench, Another player has gone down and looks like he's being taken to the locker room. That's yep. Justin, or not Justin, Ryan, Sykes, Woodland. That's Ryan Woodland. So Woodland is being led with a trainer away from this Hofstra bench. So Hofstra got, was able to get Colton Rudd. He's in this huddle for the timeout with the Hofstra Pride offensive unit. But now they're going to lose another player and a player who is a force when it comes to these man-up opportunities. Yep, and you know what? He is one of their specialists for that as well. But right now for the Pride, you still have other players you could use. You have eight seconds left on this first uh, penalty. I think you have to go quickly to try to score in the first. If, if I am anyone out there, I'd try to score in the first one so you have another one with another face-off coming. But we'll see how they roll with this because you're down by five. Season on the line with 12 minutes left. 11.37 exactly. Well, if you're Coach Tierney, you knew what you had going into this game, and you, it has not gone exactly the way that you want. But that's the same thing with this season. Hofstra has battled its way to this point, despite all the things not going well, as we get one player released. On the side of the net, shot, Justin Sykes just has that one go wide. So 25 seconds left on the second man up. Hofstra's going to retain possession. It's with Roy Jones. 67 seconds left on the shot clock. 25 left on the penalty and 11.22 on the game clock. So Hofstra gets it back out top to Elder. Elder to the far side and Gerard Kane as he plays pitch and catch with Justin Sykes on that far side alley up to Elder as he now passes back and forth with Kane. New player coming on in John Veit as a pass down low. Rory Jones scores. It's now back to a four goal game. 11 to seven in favor of the Seawolves, but 11 07 left to play in this fourth quarter. And how fitting, Christian, looking at the score and time on the clock. And now we go back for another face off. And Astra gets their first step on that Mount Everest they have to climb of five goals. Well, that's a great job there by Rory Jones and really good job by Hofstra. Now they need to keep working on here. So Chase Patterson right now has 15 face-off wins on the evening. He's going against Robbie Smith. As that is won and picked up by Corey Kale. So Hofstra goes back on offense here. As Kale has it at that far side alley. He has one defender in Mile Estrella. He's going to run back to the middle and send a short pass to Justin Sykes so he can go off and sub in for the most recent goal score for the Hofstra Pride in Rory Jones. So Ryan Sheridan has it for Hofstra. He has Dane Retta on him as he shuffles himself, stutters, and falls to second, and he passes back to Elder in the middle. Elder races, shot just wide, but Gerard Kane standing back there. All he has to do is stick his stick out, and he will retain possession for the Pride. 50 seconds left on the shot clock, 10.30 left on the game clock. Hofstra Pride down by four. Winner goes to the CAA tournament. So Kane fights his way, not getting a crease violation. Back up top 
to Sheridan. So Sheridan now has it for the Pride. He has an option to Elder. He's being harassed. Now he's double teamed. He's got to take advantage. He flips a pass to Rory Jones as Jones sends one to Kane. But Kane can't get it cleanly as Elder fights for it. But it's picked up and taken back the other way by Riley Hegarty. As he has to spin off and send one across the field where it will bounce to Sean Conk. And he sends a short pass to a more fleet-footed player in Matt Anderson. Anderson on the near side alley as he sends one over to Palinetti. So Palinetti spinning around. He's getting harassed for a second by Kale. But Kale shifts his focus off as Daniel Oaks will be the defender that marks Palinetti who sends a pass to the Helen. Sony Brook trying to make this a five goal game once more. It's on the stick of number 51, Matt Anderson. Anderson looking over his options, spins out and passes to Behelen. Behelen fakes the pass, he has Chris Barry on him. Behelen still looking, he's cutting towards the net, shot just goes wide. But two players on backup for Stony Brook in number 44, John Jonathan Huber and number 34, Dylan Palinetti. As Palinetti will start up play for the Seawolves. 29 seconds left in the shot clock, 9.15 on the game clock, 11-7 in favor of the Seawolves. Again, winner of this goes to the CAA tournament. If Hofstra can come back, they will be the fourth seed. If Stony Brook can hold on, they will be the third seed. Sonnybrook still with it, pass out top, shot saved by Matt Gates as that shot was taken by Huber who found himself wide open but Gates makes himself big in the cage and he takes it back the other way with a pass. That's a huge save for Gates especially at this point in the game. Pride need to score in this possession now as the clock is dwindling over nine minutes. So Hofstra still with it as it goes back to Parks. Parks able to race past a Stony Brook defender or attacker and Noah Armitage as Park still has it, passes to Sheridan. 8.33 left to play in the game. So not there's still plenty of time for the Pride, but that clock and that deficit that they have is going to keep getting bigger with each failed offensive possession. Parks gets it back from Sheridan, looking over options. He has Natalie on the far side alley, and he finds him. And Natalie will use his legs. Quickly running in, he spins out. He has Roy Jones across the field. Natalie still with it, cutting through the middle to Sheridan. Sheridan on the near side. He has no shotting shooting opportunity, so he's going to go to Elder. Elder in the middle. 22 seconds left on the shot clock as Elder has to move quickly. He's going to run back behind the net to X. He's being shadowed by David Mile Estrella. So still with it, his Elder is on the near side. He falls, and he tried to make a pass there to Gerard Kane, but he couldn't get it as it gets picked up by Hegarty and taken back the other way as he sends a pass back to his goalie in Jamo McLaughlin as it goes to the near side here. So a short pass again, it's taken to Matt Anderson as Anderson gets the clear for the, the Seawolves. 7.30 left to play and Hofstra needs to get a stop here and they need to get a stop quickly, Christian. They, they definitely do as the clock continues to dwindle down, Jack. Huber has it back behind the net over the near side alley to Palinetti. His Palinetti cradles it on his left side. He has Oaks on him as Oaks not giving a lot of space. Palinetti will go to that CAA logo on the near side now. Oaks still on him as Palinetti looks over his options, sends a pass, attempted, and it's shot saved there by Gates as that pass was missed, but Armitage able to pick it up and he whips a shot on to a waiting goalie in Matt Gates. They're getting these stops now from Gates at this point, but they need to capitalize offensively. Couple bad mistakes in their last couple possessions, Jack. Got to move quickly and they get the clear as there's 640 left to play in this final quarter between these two Long Island rivals. Sliding down to get it is Rory Jones. He drops it for a second, but he picks it back up. And Hofstra needs a goal here. This has to result in this being a three goal game as a miss pass, jumping up to get it is Sheridan. He can't get it, but he'll pick up the ground ball. Sheridan running in past his defender. That's Caleb Pearson as Sheridan takes it back behind the net, flips it to a teammate and Kane. Over to Elder, Elder shot just goes wide. We got a race to get this ball. Sheridan, he's gonna dive and he keeps it for the pride as he was racing with the Caleb Pearson on defense. So it's still with the pride, a reset of shot clock. It's at 60 now. Sheridan has it, spins off Pearson, has Madsen wide open, he's gonna find him. Madsen goes across the field to Sykes. Sykes himself has Retta as a defender. Sykes, bowls over defender, shot off the post again! 
And Hofstra gets it back as Rory Jones will pick it up and pass to Sykes. Gerard Kane high stepping on the far side now. He sends one up top to Sykes. Sykes races in. He loses it. And it's going to roll back to the midfield line as Danny DeSanti, or Tom Ford actually, is going to flip it to his teammate in Ryan Sheridan. 38 seconds left on the shot clock. Sheridan has it. 524 left on the game clock. It's still a four goal game. 11 to 7 in favor of the Seawolves. Hofstra has not scored in quite some time now. Roy Jones has it on the near side. He beats his defender. Pass over to Kane. Kane fakes high and he shoots it low and then he looks over. The goalie there in Jamo McLaughlin. A clear message sent. It's back to a three goal game. 11 to 8, 5 10 left to play in the fourth quarter. And Hofstra needs to make sure that that goal is not a flash in the pan. No. As Jamo McLaughlin is being surrounded by his team, might have gone down hard. But Hofstra still down by three. It goes back to the faceoff X. And we need a win here for Chase Patterson if you're. Coach Seth Tierney, he goes back up against Robbie Smith. Robbie Smith has looked good since he's coming to this game on faceoffs. Can Patterson have an answer for him here? Patterson wins it back and he collects his ground ball, sends a pounds pass to Oaks. Oaks nearly loses it. Oh. He does for a second, picks it back up. He's being harassed there by an attacker in Hooper, and a flag will fly. This could be a minute, too, if they get it. So Hofstra, huge here as it gets over the line there, cleared by Tom Ford, as Ford will send one to Madsen. This is must watch lacrosse here as a flag gets moved up, so they will still have a man up here if this doesn't go well for the Pride. Sykes has it. He cuts across the middle, sends a pass to Madsen. Madsen's going to lose it, trying to fight for it. No team has it, and it gets picked up finally there by Michael Sabella. But Hofstra is going to go on the man up here, and as you said, Christian, it's going to be a minute. 4.30 left to play in the fourth quarter, 11-8 to eight in favor of the Seawolves, and it's going to be a slash for one minute. It will be called against Jonathan Hoover. So Hofstra, they need something here, Christian. Absolutely. They got out there right now. John Vite, who we haven't seen a lot of recently this year, played a little bit early in the year against that in that Navy game, scored a goal in that game, his first career goal. Well, Vite is filling in for Ryan Woodland, who, yep. as we said, went down, and he's going to start it up. Vite sends one across the field to Kane, who then goes to Sykes. So Sykes, actually Ryan Woodland is back yep. out there, Christian. So that's Woodland as Fight has it with Kane. 45 left on the man up. Kane playing up top. He's passing back and forth. Woodland, Woodland with the ball shot, scores! And they shoulder bump between the two players there as Kane assists that goal from Ryan Woodland. It's back to a two-goal game. It's 11-9 in favor of the Seawolves. 4.09 left to play in the fourth quarter. And Hofstra needs another face-off win here from their stalwart at that face-off X, Chase Patterson, as he slowly makes his way back out there. You absolutely needed that if you're the Hofstra pride, and they got it. They absolutely got it there, Jack. What a job by the Pride. Now down by two, clawing their way back. And again, game of runs. They're on a run right now, 3-0. Let's go back for a faceoff there, and it's one forward by Patterson. He passes to Madsen. Madsen down low to number 12 in Matt Elder. And Hofstra's going to slow it down, and Coach Tierney will call a timeout. And look at the momentum that's shifting to Hofstra. If you're watching, you can see how excited they are on the bench. If you're listening, they are jumping up and down, knowing this team is back in this game, down by two. Well, Christian, four minutes left to play in the game. We're back to a two-goal deficit for the Hofstra Pride, as it is 11-9 in favor of the Stony Brook Seawolves. And to anyone who is just now tuning in, it has been a back-and-forth affair as both teams are desperately fighting for their season here is the winner will make it to next weekend CAA championship down in Delaware as if the Hofstra Pride win they will be the fourth seed and they will take on the host Delaware Blue Hens next Thursday and for Stony Brook if they win and hold on they will be the third seed in the tournament and Hofstra at a point here was down by as many as five goals, and Danny DeSanti is pumping up the Listen crowd. The crowd there. It gets loud here, and Hofstra has clawed their way back 
They've stood at the foot of Mount Everest and they have done everything, fighting tooth and nail. And this game and there's is, still time. Four minutes is a lot of time in lacrosse. A lot of time left. And this game is nowhere near as close if it's not for how well Stony Brook has played on defense, starting with their goalkeeper in number 22, J-Mo McLaughlin, as he has made save after save 10 total on the evening. So Hofstra starts it up with Trey Parks as Parks cuts it across, passes over to Sykes. So Sykes slows it down for the pride on that far side alley. He has Sheridan open across the field, but he will go near to Matt Elder, who takes it back behind that. Cuts in front, doesn't have anything. He has Madsen for an option as he plays pitch and catch. It's back with Madsen now as sirens are blaring as Sheridan has it on the far side. He's going to spin out past the parks. Parks gets hit off as Roy Jones comes on the field for the pride. 40 seconds left on the shot clock, 324 left on the game clock as Jones spins around, shot and he scores! Roy Jones spins off his defender, cuts to the middle, and he bowls one past J-Mo McLaughlin. It's 11 to 10, three minutes, 21 seconds left to play, and Christian, we have a game once again. Boy, do we, Jack. Wow, Roy Jones off the bench and in the back of the net. You had to feel when he was running onto the field there, Jack, he was going to load it up and shoot it. And oi, did he. Kreider within one with 3.21 left to go. And you have Patterson at the X, again, who has been magnificent all night, winning 18. And we've got to change. Declan Mitchell now comes in for the Seawolves. He doesn't win it as Hofstra gets it to Corey Kill. And with 3.13 left, they have a chance to tie this game once again. Christian, when they were down by five, could you have imagined as a timeout is called by Coach Seth Tierney and the Hofstra bench gets animated. They are jumping. They are celebrating. They know what they have in this offensive opportunity here. This is huge. And I personally think you have to take that timeout your Seth Tierney because you have some wrong personnel. You want to get your personnel changed here. You still have time. I, some people may think it might be early. This crowd is loud. They are loving it. They're on their feet. This is what a game this has been, Jack. Back and forth, and Sony Brook goes out to this five-goal lead. The Pride are able to answer their way back. They're within one right now with 3.07 left to go. And it's a rain-soaked crowd. The weather has been a factor here. Right now, it's misty. It's still cold in the low 50s in terms of weather. Wind has died down, however. Still, it's coming from east to west across the field as Stony Brook will break their huddle. And Hofstra turns back to their fan section that gets loud again. Right now, that offensive huddle has not broken for the Hofstra Pride. They still know what's at stake with 3.07 left. And a one-goal game Stony Brook has led since the get-go here in the second quarter. They scored near immediately and then made it a two-goal game. Pretty quickly after that is Hofstra. They break their huddle. They will be running with John Madsen, Ryan Sheard, and Gerard Kane, Rory Jones, Justin Sykes, and Matt Elder here with 72 seconds left on the shot clock. Stony that Brook bench is for Stony Brook is scene. getting loud again, though. This whole stadium is loud. So Hofstra starts it up. Sheridan's going to get that pass from John Madsen as Sheridan's on the near side here. Shimmy's off his defender, then looks over a pass. He tries to go to Roy Jones, but Jones unable to look it in. Is right now loud has it, but he's being harassed by Jones. And Sony Brook will slow it down. A bounce pass. It gets dropped. Hofstra gets it right back. Matt Elder has it with 80 seconds. A fresh 80 on the shot clock. Under three minutes left to play. 10-11 in favor of the Seawolves, but Hofstra can tie it up once again. This is huge here, and now they're going to set an ISO play here to start. It's going to be an ISO, as you said there, Christian. It's going to be Matt Elder going one-on-one -on -one with his defender. As he gets shoved off, that defender is Dane Retta. As that pass is jumping there for John Madsen, he's able to collect it. He sends it over to Roy Jones on this near side. They set up another ISO play as Jones goes against Riley Hegarty. Jones cutting across the middle, still has Hegarty on him. Racing towards the net, he gets tripped up. Flag is going to fly. Hofstra's going to go on the man up here as it goes out of bounds. So with 35 on that shot clock, it's going to get reset. Two minutes, one second in the fourth quarter. And Christian, 
Hofstra has the chance here to tie it up. So ba basically half the time now is taken on a man up here. So I think this is going to go as a minute. We'll wait to see what the ref's official call is. Trip yep, for one minute. one minute. It's going to go against Dane Retta. So now the Pride have a whole minute. A whole minute on the shot clock, a whole minute on the penalty clock. Two minutes left in the game. 201 to be exact as Hofstra will start it up. Ryan Woodland has it for the Pride. He's going to send one out top to Gerard Kane. Now to the near side to John Fight. Fight gets it back off the pass there from Roy Jones. Then to Kane. On to the far side now to Woodland. Up top now for Gerard Kane. No look pass back to Woodland. Woodland to Kane at the top. Pass in the middle, shot off the pole there, fighting for it, both teams, and it gets picked up by Christian Loud, but what a save from Jamo McLaughlin to keep this a one-goal game, but Loud can't get it out cleanly. He's going to send it across the field where Dan Newton has it. He attempts a short pass to number 51, Matt Anderson. Anderson is caught in no man's land. He sends a long pass that nearly is picked oh, off man. by Ryan Woodland, and the clear is successful here for the Seawolves as they will slow it down. No need to go quick here as Matt Anderson now has. He plays pass double back the ball. and forth with Caleb Pearson. Got to double the ball now at this point. There's the double right now. It's with Time Hegarty out. and DeSanti. Timeout is going to be called by head coach Anthony Gillardi. So with 103 left to play in the fourth quarter, two seconds remaining on that tripping call. So Hofstra is going to have to go back on defense. They need a defensive stop here. There is a 20 second, or correct, yeah, 20 second difference between shot and game clock. So Stony Brook is not going to be able to kill out the rest yeah. of them. But if they are able to get a goal, that mountain gets a lot taller for Hofstra with under a minute left to play, presumably. Yeah, this is incredible to watch, Jack. And just the resilience Hofstra has had here in this fourth quarter. Can they continue it here? The def defense has to come up huge here. They have not really been to their best in this second half. They have to come up huge here at this point in the game. And right now for Hofstra, an absolute shoot for the moon effort, doing everything they can to salvage their season. And we talked about it. The third quarter is the difference. Yeah. They had four goals to, or Stony Brook had four goals to Hofstra's one. And right now in the fourth quarter, Hofstra has five to Stony Brook's three. And we said going into the second half, if Hofstra has another third quarter that does not live up to what they need to have it be, they're going to have another moment. If they could make it a one, two goal game, they'll be in good shape. And they had it be a three goal game. And now Hofstra has scored two more than Stony Brook in this quarter. And yet they still find themselves down by one and they're on defense with their season on the line two seconds left on this penalty so Stony Brook will go back to even here this is a huge possession because Hofstra's going to start with the double and then they'll have the extra player come on for the Seawolves Stony Brook's going to start out with Dylan Palanetti as he has DeSanti all over and Palanetti will race out that far side alley as Hofstra pulls gate and he shoots it just wide. So Palinetti had the shot, but he misses. So Hofstra is going to pull gates yet again. But they got to be go careful. back for the double. Yes, have to be careful here as Stony Brook will start up. They attempt a bowl there as Gates all over Palinetti. He's back behind the net. And he oh, a flag. A flag is going to be called against Ford in the Hofstra Pride. But Palinetti lost it, but because of the slash, Hofstra's going to go down. And Unbelievable. What a call. I, I honestly thought Palinetti was out of bounds when that slash from Ford came out. And that is a tough call to make, obviously. This is heartbreaking for Hofstra. It, 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 as the chance to be a deciding factor in this one, obviously still 48 and a half seconds left to play as Palinetti has it for the Seawolves. He's being marked up here by Daniel Oak, sends it back behind the net. But because of the shot clock reset, Stony Brook does not have to score here. It would be wise for them not to as a long pass is sent across to Matt Anderson. Shot clock's off. So Stony Brook still fighting with it, sends it down to that far corner to Will Button. Button sends it back to Anderson. Hofstra has Kale all over him. One player in Blake Behelen up top. 
as Stony Brook still has it. 15 seconds left on the shot clock, but losing it there is Button. And it goes so to Hofstra. It's going to be Hofstra ball. 12.8 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. Hofstra's got to go quick here. They're going to get it onto the stick of Kale. Kale sends a Hail Mary pass, and it's going to get picked off. And five, four, three, two, and one as that ball will go out of bounds with 1.7 seconds on the clock. They want Hegarty to shoot it here. This is going to be a long, long Hail Mary shot. So it's going to be a shot taken by Hegarty on the false far side. Whips it on. Horn will sound, and it goes over the net. And the Stony Brook Seawolves survive a late rally by the Hofstra Pride. And for the first time in program history, they have punched their ticket to the CAA tournament in a game for the ages, a game that marks the first time these two teams have played 11 to 10 victory against the Hofstra Pride, who had their season come to an end in heartbreaking fashion, Christian. Just heartbreaking because of the resilience they had in this game, and they had the opportunities late. They they really outplayed Stony Brook in, this, in the fourth quarter. The Pride outplayed them in the fourth quarter, and just heartbreaking for the seniors on this team. We saw their senior. I was at their senior day a couple weeks ago. It's just going to be a heartbreaking end to a very good career for those guys who went to a CAA championship game. And well, this is a tough loss for the Pride for Stony Brook. How big is this for a program that already is one of the top programs in the Northeast is this Stony Brook program. They went to countless America East championships. They won countless championships there. NCAA tournaments. This builds their resume much more. And they can be a team that possibly could even knock off Delaware, especially the way Delaware played today. So just a heartbreaking loss for the Pride. You know, best to Stony Brook. They're, they're a very good team. And we knew coming into this one it was not going to be an easy f f t uh, task for the Pride. And it really wasn't. It's a tough loss for Hofstra, and it's going to be it's going to sit with him for a while, maybe until next year. Well, the teams will shake hands at midfield. We will take one final break when we come back. We will break down the entire game as well as the season for this Hofstra Pride team. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Men's Across, presented by Flow Sports at 88.7 FM WRHU. What time is it? I don't know.